from War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania on a gorgeous night for football or just about anything else. It is the crown jewel game of the Suburban One League this year, and it's been a long time since we've been able to say that. Central Bucks West versus Central Bucks East. Bob Friedman along with Tom White. John Price will be joining us during the game on the field. Tom, as I mentioned, it's been a long time since we could say that this is the crown jewel game, but both teams come in 6-0 and looking for a state playoff. Yeah, 96, they were 10-0. They uh, East came in here, and, and West beat them 21-3. Uh, that was probably the best East team we've seen in the last four years. But this is a very good East team, a very good West team. And you talk about what wins in big games. You and I have seen a lot of games over the years, Bob. And we're, the thing that wins starts with a D Absolutely. and ends with an E. It's defense. And the team that plays the best defense tonight will be the winner of the game. And I gotta tell you, the keys, we'll go over them at, throughout the game, I think is the big, two big defensive ends for East, Bobby Bentz and Pat Sheeran, having to contain the weapons of Phil DiGiacomo and that team, because if he can get outside, he has the option to run or throw. We know how dangerous Phil can be. Well, Phil came in in a tight spot last week against Council Rock. He started on very short notice at quarterback, did, a, I would say, a, an absolutely brilliant job. Uh, ran the offense well. They had a little bit of a sputtering start, but they came back to score 55 unanswered points in the 55-7 win. This week, he's got the reps under his belt. He's got the, the talent behind him. Real strong team with West, but East, this is probably the strongest East team that I have seen since the 1990-91 season. Yeah, well, they talk about some of the players they have. They have a very good quarterback, Josh Felicetti. He's a very smart, very athletic quarterback, and he's going to make very good decisions in tough spots. He's a good player, and he's he's going to be the key to making that offensive go. You know Brian Tingle, he comes in with over 1,000 yards, 14 touchdowns, averaging 170 yards a game. This kid is the heart and soul. That heart pumps uh, like nothing else, uh, like anybody else out there for East tonight. He, he, you listen to him on the sideline. He's got him pumped up. You see him walking right there in front of the team. He's talking to him right now. That's a big guy that he's big we part have of that. Early, we have earlier East-West action. We'll show you in a little bit. But that. you know, just as the, it goes the same way on the other side, you, Phil DiGiacomo is that same is that same leader for West. These two guys have played together at Warrington AA. Joe and his brother uh, and his brother Joe played with Brian, and we'll get to see a little of that. But I'll tell you what, this is going to be a great game tonight, well, but defense is going to be the thing that wins. Absolutely. Let's take a look at, at some earlier CBE, CB West action. If we can take a look at that, I think you'll find this very interesting. It's some action uh, that includes uh, some players and as a... Uh, now, there they are. See number 39 there? Tom, you want to go over and explain what this is? Well, you hear the crowd noise in the background, but this happens to be a little action here where Warrington was playing in the KSL playoff in 1992. You see Brian Tingle there, number 37, making a game-saving tackle. And this he's standing game, next to him, number 39. 39 is J James West. Number 12 there is uh, Joe DiGiacomo. This is DiGiacomo. We'll get back to that in a minute right now. The mighty Bucks coming on the field to, the fan, to their fans, and they're going to go to the far side of the field. They are the home team tonight. Uh, as, of course, every year they go back and forth to that. Tonight, it's a home game for CB West. We'll be showing that action to you folks all during the game. I think we had a couple of other uh, players who were on that team as well and they, in that uh, KSL playoff game. Uh, one of them was um, oh, uh, Johnny Arsenal. Johnny, that's right. Johnny Arsenal, Arsenal on that team. Actually, Kevin O'Connor is on that team. He's playing at, right. at CB East. A lot of kids on that team that uh, had a lot of fun being part of that. But Bob, this this is not just a football game tonight. You know, I was out around in town. There were red and white balloons. There were gold and black balloons. The cheerleaders for West were walking around town in their outfits. Mm -hmm. I saw cars decorated, shops and stores decorated. This is a big time event. We know that it got moved from Thanksgiving Day to today because of uh, the playoff situation. But you know what? And I, I, not to interrupt you, but the, you know what? Moving from Thanksgiving Day to this date has more meaning at this point because this is a much more meaningful game. If it played on Thanksgiving, A, it wouldn't be played in a lot of cases, and B, you'd have the playoff situation already set. Playoffs are on the platter for both teams. The winner most likely will go. The loser has still has a chance to go. Well, 
that's a great point because if one loses tonight and they go in with one loss at the end of the year, there's a very good chance that these two teams could play Much again. Much like North Penn and uh, CB West did last year. They could play again. Central Box East, as I said, it's the most powerful team that I've seen since the late 80s, early 90s. They've got a tremendous defense. They've got a real good uh, attack offensive led by Brian Tingle, led by Josh Colasetti, led by Mark Hughes, uh, who's one of his uh, real strong re receivers. On the other side of it, you have all that skill position uh, strength with the uh, CB West. Well, you know, I was down on the field, spent some time down with the coaches, and Joe Hallman was one guy, and he said, you know, I've taken a little offense this week. Everybody's saying that he's bigger, stronger, and they're going to push us around. Now, I doubt that'll happen. Knowing Mike Carey will do things, change it up, and he'll try to mess up those blocking schemes for those big East linemen. But again, it always comes down to defense, but it also comes down to the line play. We know that one, one offensive line versus the defensive line, East bigger, West smaller, quicker, stronger defensive It also line. comes down to one other thing, and the one word is execution. If you execute, if you make your blocks, if you hit the right person, if you make the right move, if you cut at the right time, if you throw the proper pass, you're going to move the ball and you're going to win the game as the captains will come out to the middle of the field. You got Bobby Holmes out there. You got uh, Pat Sharon out there, Brian Tingle, Callahan for East, Andy Varillo, Adam Shaw, Dave Camburn, and Nick Daly. Nick Daly will be a big, Nick Daly's gonna be challenged tonight because he's the tackle that's gotta fly out and pick up that rush end. He's gonna have a tough. Have a tail, so you've won, West. You're gonna defer. West wins, and they defer. You guys want the ball? So you hear that West has won the toss. Put and your backs over there. A lot, of the, a lot of the solid college teams do, they defer, which means that they're going to kick off to start the game. They will get the ball to open the second half. They want their defense on the field early, Tom. They want the challenge. Well, that's a big, big, big thing early in this game because talking earlier people have asked you all week how do you think it's going to go i think east has got to put up a lot of points yep. to counter the, the points that west will put up so high scoring game so does. i think you and i had a conversation right. during a week if it's an east win they're going to win by a lot of points if it's a west win we were saying it would probably not be quite the, the score for east so no. we'll have to see how it goes this is a tradition i love tom you've been on the field for this what's going through your mind right now as you're getting ready to shake hands well you know we we entered the game with that little waa these guys have played together since they were little guys seven eight years old at warrington at lenape valley this is an emotional time right now. You're going to walk across the field and shake a hand with a guy that you grew up with and you've been buddies with. But you know what? As they turn around now and they come to the sideline, all the friendships are over until the game's over. Well, it's time for business, and both sides are up on their feet cheering their teams as it's time for the Bucks and the Patriots. CB West, CB East, the glamour is back in Doylestown, and it's right here on Comcast at War Memorial Field going to be a great game as i said east of course in their traditional white jerseys with the red numerals blue piping and the killer b look from cb west the black jerseys the gold pants the gold lettering and helmets west getting the final instructions from uh, head coach mike carey who's done a great job in his first year and you got to believe now as we get ready for the kickoff we're going to see some kind of pooch kick from west they're not going to try to go deep here to Brian Tingle or, or, or Mark Hughes. Directional kick. And we've seen that has really proved to be problems for other teams. And you and I have had conversations all week about special teams being a big Absolutely. part of this and game. And the other thing week. is, for the first time ever, Larry Green is the veteran coach on the sideline in an East-West game. Always was up against Mike Pettin Sr. Always was, no matter how many years he was here, he was still the junior coach you had to see. Now it's his team, but that's not saying that Mike Carey is, is a uh, rookie coach. He's been putting these game plans together for years, as we well know, and we are almost ready. The ball is teed up at the 40. Bross will kick it off. Back deep is Mark Hughes. And we are underway short. High kickoff is gonna be taken by Tingle. And he'll move forward. He will get nowhere. The high short kickoff taken to the 27-yard line. It is there that the Patriots will take over. Great counter by Larry Green. Instead of putting Brian Tingle back deep, what does he do? He puts him on the wing because that's where they're pooching the ball. 
He doesn't get a whole lot of blocking. Great job by the, the kickoff team by West to come down and stay in their lanes and contain Bryant. But you've but also you've also got to give credit to Andrew Bross. He's kicked it well, short, high, where you need to get it. Not much of a, a chance for return. So we are underway, East versus West. East with the ball, Josh Felicetti at quarterback. Early handoff goes and carrying it for almost no yardage on the play uh, was Bob Bentz. Actually, that's Bobby Holmes. I'm sorry, Bobby 44. Holmes, I'm sorry. Bobby Holmes, the junior, a big part of this, this team. He's gonna lead the defense as a linebacker, but also fullback. And uh, he's the type of guy where he's gonna get his one or two runs. He's had some big games where he's had runs of 40, 50 yards for a touchdown. So he can, he can make a big run on you and West is, West is gonna have to be prepared for that. Holmes the up back, man in motion, that's Mark Hughes. He's gotta be watched, good receiver. Handoff goes to Tingle, breaks it out for three or four yards, and there is Dave Camber leading the tacklers to bring him down after about a four yard game, make it third and a, about six. A good line play there, Adam Scholl, you see him, he's, he's really active. Gavin Potter's in there, Fagnani's in there, really doing a good job early on to try to get some penetration and not let East get this running game going. And this spot early on has got to be a big third down play. There's little Daniel Mangle, him and his dad, Steve Mangle and I played football at, at East and were roomed at uh, Westchester together. Great little guy. Backs in the eye on third down. Back to pass, Felicetti, he throws it. It's caught and breaking loose, and he may go. He's got one man to beat, and dragging him down from behind was Camburn. That's Mark, Matt that's Polka. Matt Poss, uh, Matt Pocock, Pocock and Mo Matt Pocock is an interesting guy. Early in the season was a starting corner wide receiver. He got nicked up, been out a couple games. He's back tonight. And I got to tell you, a little slant, nice little pass by Falsetti. And you think he's going to get down, get tackled, and, and be short of a first down. But he breaks a tackle, gets extra yards, and East has a little life here. And Pocock cut it in, broke it back out. It looked like a couple of West players hit each other and went down. And Pocock took it all the way down to the 35-yard line of West. Handoff goes to Tingle. He's hit as he hits the line of screws. Cannot get any kind of uh, penetration. Gavin Potter up on the hit. Potter on the hit. Also in there on the hit was uh, number three in there, Pat Jarrett. Great hit by Pat. And what a we have a little thing that we asked some of the players at East and West this week to write up a little bio, and we, Bob and uh, Pat we'll Jarrett, about, we'll, we'll talk you, about uh, it. Very interesting, out, we'll talk about it. a real it, courageous story about absolutely. Pat. Absolutely. It's what makes high school sports the great sport that it is, high school football. So second down, gain of about a half a yard. Still call it second and 10 ball at the 35 of West. East with the ball, first possession of the game. Pump fake, gonna throw the fade, going deep for Pocock. Oh, and it's knocked away, it's an intercepted. It's intercepted. I believe it's intercepted, yes, and I think it's... I think that's James West. Is it West or is it Ingram? Let me see, I think it's Ingram. Now that's number five, James West. Is it West? Okay. And I'll tell you what, we, we've talked about him all year, about what a good player James West is and the ability that he has as an offense and defensive player. There you see him, a pass. It's just a pump and a fade. Josh is trying to get some air under it and have the receiver Pocock run under it. James does a great job to stay with him and fight away for the, uh, steal the ball away from the receiver. And West has uh, West got is the ball, tailback. first and 10. Phil DiGiacomo, a quarterback, as we mentioned. Spread look, the handoff goes to West. He'll cut it up, he'll get about two yards on the carry, take it out to about the 12-yard line. Well, the fade pattern was there. Pocock looked like he had West beaten. I get, Phyllis said he looked like he put a little bit more air under it than he would have liked to have. There's very little wind to really talk about tonight, but West recovered beautifully, makes the interception, and CB West will t uh, get the ball back, and it's about a four-yard gain on the first carry, making second and six. Interesting, Johnson out, Ingram in. We've, we've seen some big plays to Ingram this year. They got James West playing fullback tonight with uh, Bobby Warden in the backfield, and that was James West on that first carry. In motion now, Cameron, and it's a run on a big game by Phil DiGiacomo, cuts it to the outside. He'll get it up over the 30 to the 31 yard line. Phil DiGiacomo on the keeper, look for the whole great trap blocking. DiGiacomo makes the most of it, gets it up to the 31. And we talked about how much pressure is going to be on those defensive ends tonight for East. There you see it. Great job of hooking that end, letting Phil get up the field, only with Brian Tingle coming up from his safety spot to 
get uh, Phil by the ankle and trip him up. But Phil's off to the races. So after a couple big plays by East, this West team, after the interception, two plays are moving. First and 10 for the Bucks. Backs are in the eye. The up back is James West. Tailback is Camber, and it's a pitch to Camber, and he gets it. He cuts it upfield. He's got five. He's got 10. He's got 13 yards. Dave Camber. Great offensive surge. This West offensive line. You got Nick Daly up there, Johnny Arsold, Justin Otten, Josh Sands really doing a good job. Also in there is Gene Rich, number 55. Early on, the offensive line surge has been favor CB West. Absolutely, thus far. And the running game has worked perfectly on the first few carries for West. So first and 10, the ball now resting at the 46-yard line of West in their own territory. Backs again in the eye. Man goes in motion. That's Ingram. Hand off underneath to James West. West takes it up to midfield. He'll get about five on the carry, and it'll be second and five. Todd, Todd Bagdell, number 49 on the, on the tackle. He's playing a down lineman. This guy, I tell you, I watched him a couple, couple of the East games. Plays fullback, too. He's an explosive blocker out of the fullback spot. We'll have to keep an eye on him if, if he's in there at the fullback spot while Tingle's the tail. I've seen him really play well. He's playing defense tonight, making the tackle there. 7.15 to go on the first quarter. No score. East versus West. East carried the ball, moved the ball well. James West with the interception gives West the ball in their first possession there at midfield. Pitch goes wide to James West. Cuts it up. He's got the first down. He's got 10. He's got 14 yards. Down to the 40, the 36 yard line goes James West. And they just really absolutely caved in that whole side. The defensive end for for East, that's number 42. Bobby Benz is getting double team. So East has got to figure out a way to try to neutralize that double team or they'll go right down the field on them. First and 10 again for CBS as they're tearing off huge chunks of yards. Remember, this drive started at their own 10 yard line. Big runs by Giacomo, by West, by Camburn, and it's first and 10 ball at the 37 of CB East. Gavin Potter is the man in motion. To Giacomo, cuts it to the right side. He'll get about four or five on the carry. You know what I'm noticing, though? I'm watching line. It almost looks like the offensive line, they're firing off so fast, it almost looks like they're jumping offside. But they're not. They're precision. And again, we talk about execution. They are beating East right now to the line of scrimmage. That time, Mark Hughes comes up from his D-back spot, makes a tackle, but they got four and a half, five yards. East has got to do a better job to try to stop the runner. It's going to be a long night for him. Second and a long five. The ball at about the 33-yard uh, line, maybe 34-yard line of East. The Giacomo gets outside. He'll get close to closer to the 30-yard line, but a nice pursuit on the play. Looked like Bobby Benz and a couple Bobby of Holmes. Bobby Holmes. He's that inside linebacker. Does a good job to scrape down the line of scrimmage, make the tackle, and he takes him down. You know, I keep doing that. I know it's Bobby Holmes, and I keep going Bobby Benz. So I'm giving free advertising to Bobby Benz. But Bobby Holmes is making the plays. Number 44 on the play. Bobby Holmes. I promise I'll continue to get your name right this time. And he's actually the. The left side linebacker did a good job to scrape all the way over and make the tackle as he doesn't make it. Phil's about ready to square his shoulders and take it upfield. So a third down and the first big play of the game for uh, West is a third and a long four. The ball at the 32 yard line. Deep handoff to Cameron. He's got the first down and he almost busts it loose. But a great tackle in the back defensive backfield on that play. And that looked to be. Toby Long on the tackle, saving a touchdown as the delayed handoff, Tom, works perfectly. Yeah, you got to love the counter because everything west is either right or left, kind of a, a little sem semi-roll. Here it is. We're going to get a, a little replay on it. And everybody, the defense is flowing to the defense's left here because Phil opens up and comes left, and then you counter back right. Everybody's a step the wrong way, and it's an easy block. Lucky for Toby Long at a safety spot here to take him down where Camburn's in the end zone. While we have a timeout, let's see if we can take a little more look at that KSL playoff. But I do want to talk about one thing. Tommy mentioned it earlier. Some of the seniors wrote uh, bios on uh, what they've done and so forth. Patrick Jarrett's parents, extremely proud of Patrick. Patrick and Tom Jarrett player. and Kathy Jarrett do right, a Tom and Kathy. ton of stuff for this Super West program. People. Great people. One thing 
talk about is overcoming adversity. Well, there are bumps and there are bruises and you break a bone or you, or you have a pulled muscle. Patrick Jarrett was diagnosed in 1997 as having juvenile diabetes. He uh, it takes it, he's insulin dependent and he adjusts, it, he'll adjust the dosage per, on a per as needed basis. This is a kid who has overcome an, an ailment, as we take a look at some of the KSL uh, playoffs, an ailment that could have sidelined another, uh, another player or a lesser person. He's out there on the field playing the toughest physical contact game around. And you can only take your hats off to, to Pat Jarrett. Just a great kid, a great athlete, as we're back to live action. And we just wanted to mention that. Patrick Jarrett, number three in your program, super young man and a great young football player. First and 10 for CB West after the timeout. Handoff underneath James West to the 10. He's got it down to the five yard line. And the quick handoff in that line is doing the job, Tom. They're doing a job, and James West does a nice little job in there. He runs with his eyes. He makes a little cut right at the right at the line of scrimmage to free himself up to get the first down. We've had Mike Petten up here. We've had some people up here talking with us, and we've all said that this kid could play somewhere else, start and be a star in this league. With uh, Mike Oriole being out a couple games here and Phil at quarterback, they put James West at fullback, and he's made some big little runs here early in the game. Ball at the 11-yard line. I missed the yardage, and the handoff goes and carrying it for very short yardage on the play. That was uh, Bob Warden. Nice knifing through in the, in the backfield. And this is where East has got to come up and play some serious football. They've got the backs against the goal line. The bad news is they've got the backs against the goal line. The good news is it's a short field now, so you can take a few more chances, Tom. Yeah, I, I missed a play on that, but here's here's what West need, I mean East needs to do against this real good running game is they got to run blitz. There they do it. I missed the number. I'm going to say maybe it was Bobby Holmes again. It was one of the linebackers. But you got to get guys into the backfield when a team's running on you like that. And you got to do more of that to be successful. Single setback, man in motion is James West. It's a keeper by the Giacomo. He finds a hole. He's to the five. He's to the three, and he barrels his way down to about the three-yard line. He'll be about two yards shy of the first down. Make it third and two. Phil the Giacomo running the option play beautifully, finding the hole, carrying it in a la Corey Potter, a la Mike Oriole. Well, he does a good job, Phil. We talked about his strength and what lower body strength he has. Here, he's going to actually have a little seam on the replay you're going to see it where it looks like the east player is going to come up and force and make the tackle right in here and he's going to run through that tackle there and there's mike zop and mark hughes and a couple other guys that's brian tingle there yep. driving them back but they're right down on the doorstep now bob ball at the two third and a short one Everybody in. The handoff goes to West. He pushes his way in. Is he in? He's in. James West. Touchdown, Central Bucks West. So James West takes it in behind that front line. He did a great job on that series. A 90-yard drive after the West interception. He started the drive. He ended the drive. James West with a two-yard touchdown run. Six-nothing, uh, the Bucks with 2.43 to go in the first quarter. Andrew Bross will take a, a kick the extra point out of DiGiacomo's hole. Snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is high. And it's no good, it's off to the right. Off to the right, but you know, you, you talk about teams that win and win consistently. They do all the little things right. You hit it right on the head, Bob. You know, it starts with the offensive line and the defensive line. You, When that ball snapped, the team that beats the other team off the ball generally is going to be in favor on the scoreboard and take control of the game, and they did it on that drive. And if you see the East, if you're Larry Green, you've got to be telling your kids right now, listen, guys, you move the ball in the first offensive series. It's not like they stuffed you. You move the ball. You got it into Buck territory. You threw a pass, a great interception by the defender. But otherwise, we're moving the ball. Let's just keep doing it. We have got right now uh, 39, almost 39 minutes yet to play in this football game. Let's go back there and show them what Patriot football is all about. And I'm certain you're going to see that on this series. They moved the ball nicely against the Bucs. And now we'll see. Now we have Tingle again up. Let's see if they try and... Let's see if they try and uh, kick the low line drive. Well, he's lined up. 
the same place he was. If you look on the screen, the kicker's all the way over on his left side. Brian's over here, kind of in the flat on the right side. And here comes the kick. It goes high it's and coming deep right this time. To it's gonna go to, go to, well, Tingle comes back to take it at the 10. Cuts up to the 15, has nowhere to go, and he goes down at the 17-yard line. See, now, there, Tingle went back for it. Mark Hughes is a good receiver. He's got good speed. If you want to take him going forward, Tingle went backward to get the ball, had to reset, uh, re uh, reset himself. By the time that happened, he had black jerseys all around him. Yeah, you, the guys up front have to do a better job of cutting down those guys that are rushing down the field and give Brian an opportunity to run the ball. He catches it and he's hammered. Great job by the special teams by West. Josh Felicetti again in quarterback. A power eye look this time for East and the handoff goes to Tingle. He's got a little bit of yardage, but not much. He'll get about three on the carry, make it second and seven. And again, the defensive line of CB West is pushing back the offensive line. Now they got about three yards on the carry, but it really was a, a, not a real wide through. They gave a little bit of a push, but they've got to get better. They've got to open some holes right now, which they're not quite doing. They're pushing West back because of their size, but they're not getting pushed off the line. Well, you know, they get three and a half yards. That's not a bad That's first right. down play. Now they got to maybe open it up a little bit and see if they can get this defense to, to loosen up a little bit. Now the backs are in the eye. Quick pass, two tingle, he bounces it. Well-devised play, tingle was gonna be one on three, but you still like his off chances even with that. But the ball, I think, I think Fella said he had to throw it just a split second before he wanted to, threw it a little bit off his back leg. Can't get, that's the toughest pass in football, Tom, that sideline well, pass. Well, one of the things you're worried about is if you wait too long and a defensive back's reacted to it, he'll step in front of it and go the other way. So your instinct is quick, hard snap and turn and throw. There he just didn't get all of it. But a big, another big down, big third down play for East here. They got to get a little momentum. Third and six. Backs are in the eye. Phyllis said he's straight back. Handoff underneath and a great call. Carrying it there is Bobby Holmes. He looks like he's got the first down. It depends on the spot, Tom. I think he's about a half a yard short. I, you know, watching where the spot is, he's going to be real close. And you know, this is a big call here early in the game because if you give the ball back to that big uh, West offense, versatile offense, I should say. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think he's short by about the nose of the football. He's short. And this is a real big call early for Larry Green because he knows He's got to keep the ball out of that offensive machine's hand at West. Pull it, and he is, oh, short by the nose of a football. Now, let's see if they'll punt the ball away. Normal procedure says you punt the ball away. This is a momentum setter, too. Good, solid coaching says you've got to give the ball up. You're the nose of the football away. You're only at the 27-yard line. you got a lot of game to play. Well, I'll tell you what I'm calling here is a keep. I mean, you, you take the ball under the center if you're going to go for it, and just, I mean, a half, a nose of the football is. Well, what I like do is I get, the, I get them under there, I try to get them to do a stagger count. On and two, and, draw the on two and then a keep. Right, and that's what he's doing coming up here. Let's see if he tries to draw them off. Everybody in tight. It's a handoff, and it's Holmes, and he'll have the first down. He'll have the first down going behind the right side of that line. They'll move the sticks. Basically, all he needed to do is do some solid blocking up front. The line did a superb job. Holmes takes the ball and he carries it right behind number 75. That's Jim Kokus, and he gets the first down. Yeah, Kokus, uh, big senior lineman this year, is really having an outstanding year. He talked a little bit in the paper this week about how last year, 3-7, and seven was really a struggle for him. This year, he's really relishing in this uh, early victory that the East has been on. On first down, deep handoff to Tingle. Running behind Holmes, nice block by Holmes, gives him another few yards. He'll get seven on the carry. But the guy in the game now for East at fullback is number 49, Todd Bagel. And I'll tell you, he's, he's a guy that delivers a blow. And when he's in the game, the couple games that I've watched for East, he makes a difference with Brian Tingle running behind oh, him. Oh, Tom, have we got a harvest moon coming up tonight right behind the high school. We'll see it in a little bit. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous harvest moon coming up in mid-October. Great football weather. Second down on the eight-yard carry. Make it two. Handoff goes. Carrying it is home. He drags people. He'll again 
be close to the first down. Again, it depends on the spot. Well, they're moving the chains already. And let's let's say hi to the guys over at the chains. These guys, Don Kinder, uh, Frank Bittner, Art Logan, the West crew, who's been doing it for years. And then you got Joe Quinn and Bob Nagel, who do the East right. games. These guys do a great job. So I want to say hi to them. And they've actually let me have a chance at uh, running the sticks this year on a couple of games. It's been a lot of fun. All right, Tom. First down for East, and they're moving the ball again. You know, I, I mentioned on that fourth down, on the sh fourth and short, Larry Green showed me something. There are a lot of coaches as they come to the end of the first quarter. We'll talk a little bit, and also we'll take a little more, another look, some more looks at the KSL playoffs so we can see that a little bit more. But let's talk about this right now. That play on fourth down, that play on fourth down was a big play. Let's take a break. We'll talk about it when we come back. We are at the end of the first quarter. The score, Central Bucks West 6, Central Bucks West East. Nothing as you see. James West running the ball. We'll go to break and be right back. There's James West. I want to start investing. Hmm. I heard about these new inflation index I bonds from the U.S. Treasury that guarantee a return above inflation. Well, we don't offer them, but there's this new stock. It guarantees a return. Guarantee? <laughs> there are no guarantees, but... Well, there are with I-bonds. They guarantee a real return beyond inflation. Well... Hey, George. Oh, what, are you worried about a little blip in the market? <laughs> Can I call you back? Okay. I should tell you that I'm not comfortable with risk. Well, what's a little risk? I don't think you understand. Well, Look, I want an investment that's guaranteed to stay ahead of inflation, like the I-bond, that's safe, like the I-bond, that lets me save money on my state and local income taxes, like the I-bond, and will let me get started with as little as $50. Like the I-bond. Right. Uh -oh. Back and on the first play of the second quarter, Angelo Varillo sacks Felicetti back at his own 32-yard line, and he just barreled in there. Yeah, and great job, Varillo. He's actually doing a great job on the offensive side from his tight end spot. Their pressure on Felicetti. Josh in that spot, he had two guys out in the pattern. If they're covered, he's got to, in this game, he's got to make a decision to get rid of it so he doesn't lose that big yard. There he doesn't take, take that advantage and gets a big 12 12 yard loss and looking at second and 22 here for uh, East. Well, they mark it up uh, at about the 32, so it's, they, they give him four yards back at second and 18 right now. Felicetti with a deep handoff. Carrying, oh, what a hit! Oh, Camburn just put a, stuck his shoulder right into to Tingle, and that's your dream tackle, Tom. Uh, Camburn, you know, he's Mr. Excitement. We've always said that he's he does it all. He'll do it on special teams and do it on offense but he also can come up and hit you on defense. You see him there making a good play. And Brian's a tough kid to bring oh, down. Brian. He doesn't go down easy, and I'm sure Kerry this week emphasized over and over, if you guys don't put the leather and wrap on this kid, he'll run through and arm tackles. And these kids have played with and against him for enough times that they know what he's like. Well, we know watching the little Warrington AA tape how elusive he was even at eight years old. Third down and about 16. Pass goes out, and Hughes turns around, and he's buried again. And is that him again? And oh, that's Zach Ingram. Zach Ingram with a great open field, and Luann is real. She's a happy lady right now. Luann Ingram, Zach's mom, sits right in front of us in the home games. And she's turning around. She's looking at the screen. She wants to see Zach make the play. Great play by Zach Ingram. A great defensive series by West, and it will force the first punt of the game. Let's take a look at it one more time. And here, Josh is just going to throw. Now, we'll take a look we'll at it momentarily. Back. Right now, we have a punt coming up. Good snap. High sort of end-over-end -end kick. It'll be taken in. Oh, almost dropped by Camburn, and now he's going to be buried at about the 37-yard line. Camburn, there was a little bit of mix-up communications there, it looked like, between Ingram and Camburn. 
Dave got it, almost lost it, couldn't get his equilibrium back by that time he did the white jerseys were all around him. As to Giacomo back there with him, it looked, you're right, didn't look like they, they communicated well enough to say, hey, I got it. And he did a good job once he did get his hands around it to make sure he got it, because it looked like he was fumbling it around a little before he got possession. And I think that hurt him trying to get it outside. Wet East does a good job to contain him and not let him get up the field, because we know how dangerous Cam Burn can exactly. be on those punts. And now it's East's turn to play some solid defense as they allowed West to go 90 yards. This time it's at the 37-yard line. Almost a fumble, almost a bad handoff. Was it fumble? Let's see. No, it was just, it was, it was a, looked like he handed off a West hip. And Todd, he had a little trouble. Todd Bagnell again in there on a D line, did a nice job. You know, now they've, they've gotten a chance to see some of the plays in that first drive, and they get, they get some indicators and some signs of what kind of plays they're going to run. They're on first down. It's the first play we've seen maybe all year where we've seen West actually stop for a loss. So East knows that in order they stay in this game, they got to have a good defensive stand here, trailing 6 nothing at 8.56 to go in the second quarter. Second and 11. Single setback. Now motion goes West. Rolling to the left is... To Giacomo, ball comes loose. Ball comes loose to see who jumps on it. Are they gonna give it to East? Yes, it's East ball at the 29 yard line. That's They're Bobby Bentz, he's trying to wrestle it away from James West. And the sideline for West is not happy because you know what, as a referee, you have to let one guy come up with the ball. I don't know how he made that quick call to call it an East ball because both guys were down fighting for it. Nonetheless, it looks like they're going to give it to East, and, and that's the first and big turnover big of the, the game. game. And it was it was a side judge who made the call, and he was about 15 yards off the plane. Now, you see them diving for the ball. Let's see if we can catch it here. Well, that's Benson and Sharon with two defensive ends that we talked about how to have big games, and they come up with the fumble. And on the first play, it's Tingle. Tingle takes it inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. You know what? On that replay, in all fairness to everything, that ball looked like it was between Benz and West, and when you have dual possession, it goes to the offensive team. Yeah, I'm not sure how, and he made such a quick call on it, I don't get it. But anyway, let's talk about this East offensive line. You got Jerry Penders playing guard, Callahan's the center, also in there. You got Bobby Graham, we'll see some time tonight. Jim Kokus, we talked about him, and John Harsh. Starting to get warmed Callahan's up a little bit. Callahan's a familiar name, too. Just getting warmed up here a little bit. Jerry Pender's another, another WAA kid. Coached him. Great kid. Really worked hard to start this year. Second Doing a seven, good job. Felicetti. Hand off to Tingle. Tingle will take it down to about the 25-yard line. Make it third and about four, maybe five yards as a, after the two-yard carry. Now, you're in four-down territory here, and Larry Green knows this. So if he can get a couple, three yards on this carry, he's got a shot on fourth down. He'd like to get the first down now, obviously. Here, here's, I've seen him run this play. A couple times I've seen East. It's a very similar pay, play that West likes to run, which is just a roll and a waggle. They'll have Brian Tingle come out in the flat, one-on-one -on, -one on a linebacker. And if he catches the ball, he's, you know, he's, he's dangerous if he turns it up. Let's see what they got. Third and five. Ball at the 25-yard line. Here's the pass. Going close to the first down on the uh, on the catch will be Eric Eislinger, who made the reception. And he's about a half a yard short. And again, a big play in this game. It's still early. It's the second quarter. Let's take a look at the past Eislinger. You see uh, Mike Carey giving the signals to his team. There, Eisling is just catching a little slant. Nice job, by, uh, nice job by Josh to lead him, hit him right under the armpit. He catches the ball, gets what he can, and here it is. You know, this is a big play. Well, it was Bobby Holst last time to do Holmes last time to do it. Let's see if he gets it again. No, it's Felicetti, and I don't think he's got it. I think they stuffed him. I think that they stuffed him, and it was Bob Warden coming in and stopping Felicetti, and they won't even measure. First down, Central Bucks West. Well, you know what? You got to love that keep call, but you got to get that, you got to get a little bit of a push, and the center, Callahan that time, didn't get enough of a push. Got to give credit to that West team. Pat Jarrett in there, Fignani in there, right in the middle of that defense, and when that ball snapped, again, 
you got to get off the ball. you got to beat the guy off the ball, and the guy that does wins. That time, West wins. Well, they dodged the bullet on the fumble by Phil DiGiacomo, and they take the ball back over at their own 20-yard line. Backs are in the eye. Pitch goes wide to Bob Warden, trying to get outside, getting about two yards, tackled out there on a nice open field tackle by number 49, that, of course, being Todd Bagnell. Bagnell, I'll tell you, early on, he's been the guy consistently making plays along that defensive line for East. Bobby makes a nice little run, still gets two and a half, three yards, not a bad play on... Not a bad bunch of yards on first down, but the defense is starting to settle down a little bit for East. Now look for maybe some play action here, Bob, and a pass. Second down, seven, the ball at the 23-yard line, just shy of the 24. Backs again are in the eye, Phil Giacomo. The deep handoff goes and carries for good yardage is Bob Warden. Out over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Bob Warden on the delay counter handoff, and it was there. Giant hole in there. Great job. Great execution. Johnny Arsenal, Nick Daly in there. Gene Rich, nice job blocking up front. Big hole. Here it is. Let's watch this offensive line. Let's see if we can pick up who, who's making that key block. Right here, you got a couple guys. You got the center. There's Gene Rich, 55. They're coming right behind him. Gets a good block. Seals it There's off. Nick Daly right Look there. The Great block blocks. by Daly. Beautifully done. Timeout called right now. And a, a touchdown saving tackle there at the end. Brian Tingle not, not in there at safety that time. I didn't catch the number. I apologize. But a touchdown saving tackle by the Five safety Five and a half Greece. minutes to go. Five and a half minutes to go in the half, and it's six to nothing as we're going to go down right now to John Price on the field. Hey, guys, I'm down here with uh, the West cheerleaders. Obviously, it was a big week for them. It's, it's not a one-night deal. It's not a one-night deal for you. When do you guys start preparing for the season? Um, we started preparing during the spring because um, Wes is going to Florida for a football game. I'm so sorry. what? That's okay. You're doing fine. What um, was special about this week that you guys did? It was a big week, obviously. Both teams were undefeated. What did you guys do this week? Um, we had a lot to do for the teams. Um, we decorated the bedrooms for all the boys, so that was a lot of fun. We decorated the lobby and the locker room. We put a lot of effort into it to psych up our fans and the crowd. Nice job, guys. Senior co-captains here, Cindy and Nicole. Back up to you guys. <laughs> all right. Good work, John Price, always tackling the toughest of jobs. John Price, excellent job on the sideline. So, first and 10. Keeper by DiGiacomo. Breaks it over midfield, he could go! Phil DiGiacomo, one man with an angle on him, and he'll knock, no, he won't knock him out! DiGiacomo will score! Oh, my word, what a run! 59 yards, Phil DiGiacomo showing the speed and the strength as it looked for all the world, like he was gonna get knocked out at about the 20. Puts a straight arm at him, an old-fashioned knock in the head, straight arm, carries it in 59 yards, and it's 12 to nothing. Mark Hughes had an angle on him, wasn't able to get to his legs. Phil with a great stiff arm, but again, the blocking was incredible. The way they caved in that whole end on East, it was a giant hole. Phil got up in it, and he, he makes the difference with his legs. And West right here gonna come to the sideline. I don't know if they've called a timeout. They call a timeout I think they called a timeout. Two. They're ahead 12-0, 5.17 to go, as we got a timeout here right before the extra point. Let's take a, take a look right now, if we can, at the uh, some of the more K K KSL highlights, which featured Phil's brother, Joe DiGiacomo, back in 1993, you said it was. And as I say, the quarterback, if you look at the quarterback in that old KSL playoff, it's a name very familiar to you folks. It's Tom White Jr.'s uh, Mike Carey talks to his players. I don't know if we have that tape right now of the KSL playoffs, but we're going to show that th throughout the game. And some great players were in that game. But I'll tell you what, you got to go back to the, that play and those, the line play for West, just so dominating. They just absolutely caved in the, the East the, the Eves end. I think we're going to go right here Let's to the, the KSL. Uh, here we go. There's Brian Tingle there. He's seven or eight years old there. That KSL playoff Let's game go, was against Edward O'Malley from South Philadelphia. Tommy White Jr. quarterback, and, and there's Tingle again. Brian Saint Tingle Carey. again. We had a few penalty flags on that play, but nonetheless, you, you see these kids. I'll tell you what, they had a ball 
playing in this game. It end up as we get down to it. All right, we are back to live action now as they will go for two to Giacomo with West in the backfield along with Hamburg. Hamburg slotted to the left side. It's a keeper, no, it's a handoff and carrying it in, Zach Ingram. Zach Ingram off the reverse, gets the carry, and he'll take it in for the two, and it's 14 to nothing. So, with five, five minutes and 17 seconds to go in the half, it's suddenly 14 to nothing, and if you're an East fan, you've got to say, now we've got to move the ball. We cannot be stuck on this possession. The game is still very much up for grabs, Tom, and East is still a very solid football team, but they've got to move the ball now, and they know it. Well, you know, they had the opportunity on the fumble. They weren't able to get it on fourth and very short. That's a huge take the wind out of your sail kind of play. Here it's just a, a little fake inside and a, a reverse, inside reverse to Zach Ingram. He runs hard right there, runs through the the, the, the safety right there at the goal line and, and punches it in. Tingle trying to, trying to tackle him at the goal line. Yeah. But this is a good West team. 51 wins in a row. And, uh, you know, they know East comes in. They're 6-0, and and it's going to be a tough game. But they're just sticking to their game plan, and they've put East to the challenge now. Down two scores. What, what do you have right left? To right to toe. That's what they need to find out. So Bross will line it up. He'll kick it high, he'll kick it short. It will bounce and be picked up by an up man. He'll take it up over the 25 to the 30 yard line as it was picked up by one of the up backs and that was Dan McKelvey. And they'll get the ball at the 30 yard line, Will CB East. Now it has been a very lopsided series in, in tone of victories, I believe it West is 28-2 and 1. The last East victory, I think, in 1983, Tom, if I'm correct on that. And of course, the tie about 88. In, in 88. Right. But uh, it, every game, virtually every game, has been extremely competitive. Felicetti with a look in pass. He's got his man Hughes. Hughes has got the first down over the 40 yard line. A dangerous pass. Hughes did the right thing. He looked the ball into his numbers. He could have tried to go for more yardage, but he secured the ball because if that ball pops out, there are three black jerseys and nobody on the other side of the field to take it at the intercept. Well, he's, Mark is extremely fast. Might, might be, I hate to say it, might be the fastest guy in the field. Some people would challenge me on that, but he's very fast, and if he gets a step, he can go. Keep an eye on that play later in the game where he pumps it and goes. Well, they tried to run it earlier, and James West picked it off. Backs are split. Holmes and Tingle. In motion is Hughes. On first and ten, fake reverse, back to pass. He's got center screen to Holmes. Well defensive, he'll get about two yards on the play. He threw it over the uh, onrushing lineman, but Holmes was surrounded by people and they didn't have any kind of a screen set up there. It was a good play in concept, but in execution, it just didn't work. Yeah, Pat Jarrett, Pat Jarrett makes a great play here. He's the, he's the linebacker if we get the replay. You're going to see him, number three. He stays home. Josh is going to dump it here. Nice job by Holmes to get up and get it. But watch Pat Jarrett come in here, make the play. In there, James West as well. Also, McKinstry doing a good job. That's a tough play to defend. Second and seven. Quick pass. Getting the ball is a Hughes. And he's wrapped up by Zach Ingram, who would not let him get by. He'll get about five on four or five on the play. But Zach Ingram, one on one, grabbed hold of the jersey and would not let him go. Yeah, I'll tell you, they've done a good job to tackle people in the open field. It's a very tough thing to do. If you've ever played defensive back, which uh, I was fortunate to do and sometimes unfortunate had to play that position, it's tough because it's, everybody's watching. You missed the tackle. The guy's going for a touchdown. West tonight has done a great job making the tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Third down and three, ball at the 47-yard uh, line. And of course, to Tingle, he's going to be about a half a yard short of that first down. But again, you're in four down territory right now. Yeah, I, I think they got to look to take the ball down the field here as we're under three minutes in this second quarter. And this would be a huge shot in the arm for East. They're going to, looks like they're going to take a timeout. Actually, it's going to be timeout measure, for the measure. I think measure. they're going to measure. 
You know what, Tom? I don't know that he doesn't have the first down here. I really don't know that he, he may have that first down. That was a favorable spot, but I, they're going to stretch the chain a little bit. I think he's got it. He's yes. got it. Because when he it, came down, if you, if, you, if you saw it on a replay, his shoulder hits the ground first, and generally the ball is behind your shoulder, and they put it down where the ball, where his shoulder hit. Well, I think east. they gave him an unfavorable spot on the earlier get on the third down. Here the you west sideline. the side west sideline uh, calling out encouragement to the team, but a fresh 4-4 four, four CB East as we are now inside three minutes to go in the first half, 14-0 West. Handoff goes and carrying it is Tingle. Tingle's getting past the line of scrimmage, but they're getting hands on him and slowing him down, Tom. He's not able to get that, that burst of speed that will make him so dangerous. Well, what teams do, especially when they have a good back, is they'll, they'll come up with a guy called a spy. Well, you know who the spy is tonight. It's Dave Camber. He makes the tackle again. You're right. He gets through the first line of scrimmage, and then there's Dave Camberg. He's very good at stepping behind the lead block and making the tackle. He did it there again. And slowing him down. He did that. It's a gain of four on the play, however. So second down and six. Backs in the eye. Now they move over to the wing. Uh, does Tingle. Back to pass. Felicetti. Throws it over the middle to Hughes. Cuts it back. He'll look for some yardage. And, oh, James West starts him. And uh, Ingram. And let's see who else that was. Uh, Tom McKinstry finish him off. Yeah, I'll tell you, Josh really did a very good job there. He was very patient. He looked he looked off the guys going out and came back to the receiver. Hughes coming across, hit him in stride, and he did a nice job to run after he well, caught Hughes the ball. Hughes showed me something there. You, you're a wide receiver. You're not afraid to go over the middle. He took the punishment. He gets the first down for CBs, who's moving the ball smartly now. First and 10, ball at the 36-yard line of CB West. Handoff goes to Tingle. He's got five. He's out in the secondary. Brought down by James West as he gets inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. West on the tackle along with Zach Ingram, but another big gain by Brian Tingle, and they're going without a huddle, Tom. Well, it's it's a minute 28 to go. I believe they have used not. their timeouts. I think that's their second one. We'll have to check that. So that means they got one timeout left. So the clock a little bit against them here as we get close to the end of this half, minute 28 to go. But you got to love their courage and their, th th their no-die attitude here, down 14 nothing here against West. Well, you know, the thing they've got to realize is they're down at the 24-yard line. They still have a minute and 20-some 20, uh, 20 seconds to go in the, in the second quarter. That's a lot of time. West knows that if they can keep them on the ground and keep them shy of a first down the clock and keep them in bounds, it's going to keep the clock running. East knows this too, so you got to think they're going to try and run some wide plays, a couple of pass plays, see what they can do on, the, on those kinds of plays, and then maybe try and sneak in a deep handoff and see if they can get Tingle into the secondary again. But this offensive thrust after the touchdown that you wondered if it would be a backbreaker, this thrust has been a nice offensive series for CB East. So I'm sure what they're doing, what Green is doing right now, he's talking to his team and calling two plays you got in the it. huddle. You got and it. And they want to do it, and you get, you, you, first play goes, you go and run the second play, and then what you've got to do is you've got to down the ball. You've got to ground the ball at that point. So here we go. A minute, 28 seconds to go in the first half. 14-0 West. East with the ball at the Bucks' 24-yard line. Felicetti, the quarterback, backs her in the eye. Holmes, the up back. Handoff goes to Tingle. Tingle's got five. Tingle's got eight. He'll be close to the first down, but he won't have it, and the clock will continue to run. And here comes the east line up to the line of scrimmage again on second down and about three. Gain of seven on the play. They're setting it up. Fella Setti again. He'll go back to pass. He's going to throw the fade. He's going to go deep for it and not able to get the ball as a uh, good defensive play as they're trying to get it to Eric Eislinger. But a good defensive play by Zach Ingram on the play would not let Eisler get deep. A good second down play. They still have two plays with about three yards to go. But instead of throwing the ball down and stopping the clock, take a shot, get it, Why try not? to get it in the end zone. I think that's a great call. Now he has a chance to get Falsetti over there, get a play in. Well, what Felicetti did, which impressed me also, was he knew that it was going to take a miracle play for Iceland to make the play. He throws it long for three reasons. One, the only one who can catch it is Iceland. Two, if it's not caught, it's going to fall incomplete. Three, there's a possibility of interference being called on the play. So it's a good play. 
Handoff goes and going nowhere on the carry. And it'll be fourth down, and the clock will continue to run as they gave it to Tingle, and West absolutely buried him, and East will have to call a timeout. Now, Tommy, do you try the field goal here? Well, you know what, we have to, have to look at the East kicker, uh, and it would be a decision by Larry Green as to whether he thinks he could make it. The ball's on the, what, let's say the 17-yard 17, 17 line, so you're looking at a 32-yard field goal. And it's dead on in the middle of the field. Middle of the field. So can can the field goal cooker make a 32-yard well, field goal? Well, they're not even looking at that right now. They're going to go for it. So you obviously know what's going to happen here. And I like that, too. It's confidence in your offensive team. It's Carrie. It's Mike Carrie talking to uh, uh, J Tom McKinstry. You know, and I, I haven't seen him run this play yet. And I saw him earlier. It's just a little flat pattern where Brian comes out and goes about four <laughs> yards into the flat. They haven't run it tonight. He ran it four or five times against Pensbury and had huge gains. Let's see if that's the call. I, I'd like to see them use, use uh, uh, Tingle as a decoy here. And try and either have Felicetti do it himself. Now they go wide and there's nobody in the backfield. On fourth down, Felicetti. Oh, he's going to be buried! Oh, Fran! Oh, what, who is it? I was going to say Fran Gold, but no, it's not. Excuse me. It's that's Adam, Adam Schultz. Adam Shaw, oh, and he came in untouched. And the ball will go over to West with 52 seconds to go. They showed the no backfield look. Now what happens is nobody's back here to block. He creeps up on the end here, and he just comes untouched. There's nobody there that can block him. So what happens when you run that play, if you're the quarterback, you got to say, I got to get rid of it quick. Josh does it, never saw him, and Shaw makes a giant play with 52 seconds to go in the half. Now let's see if the Bucks just hold on to the ball and uh, carry it the half. They will get the ball to open in the second half. Pitch goes to Bob Warden. Warden cuts it upfield. He'll get it over the uh, 25 to the 29-yard line, and they'll just let the clock continue to run down as, again, a little more of the air goes out of East Balloon. It was a beautiful drive, and on that fourth down, they tried a different look and no backfield look, and Adam Schultz just crept up, as you said, went in untouched and buried Felicetti before he could do anything. Second down, this should be barring a pass, a penalty, or a fumble, or a fly, a penalty. That's illegal substitution. You can't have 12 guys in the huddle at any time. Yeah. And I think what happened there is they had 12 guys in the huddle, and there's the flag. Let's see if that's the call. Substitution on the offense. And five I yards, that's repeat the, the down. That is the call. So at least it'll go back five. And this time you have 20 seconds. To, excuse me, you have 18 seconds to go in the half. You got to figure that basically what will happen is here is they'll take a knee. They'll go to the locker room. They know they're going to get the kickoff to open the second half, and they'll go in leading 14 to nothing. Unless. You think they might try the pass? Halfback pass, clock. Never know. Now there's another flag. What do we have here? Do we have it again substitution or is it motion this time? A dead ball, false start offense, motion. left guard. Five yards. Two men moving at the same time. You want to take it? Well, now, Tom, I think you, if you're West, you just take the knee no matter what because you don't want to give it any kind of a chance of giving the ball away at this point. And they're going to get and they're it gonna to start the clock, the clock runs out. And they get the ball to start the second half. Wait a minute, half. the clock will run. Yeah, that'll end the half. They started the clock, and that will end the first half. A half that has seen some great football played, but it was CB West on two long drives. Two long drives uh, capped by uh, James West, short run, and a Phil Giacomo. 51-yard touchdown run. You see the Comcast scoreboard, 14 to nothing at the half. I'll tell you, Tom, it's been it a great. It doesn't look like the officials let the time run out. They oh, wait a ran minute. out on the clock, but I think they're going to make them run a play, so they'll That's probably they be it down. The, they should have stopped the clock because of penalty. Now they just see them taking the. They do, and that should end the half, and that'll do it now. So, as we were talking about, CBS with two scores. Gets the has the 14 to nothing lead. They will get the ball to open the second half. Tom, it's been a case for East as we see it so many times when East plays West. They play so well up to a point, and they just have something to seem to shoot them in the foot. Yeah, well, I tell you what, they've they've come out, they've played hard. 
really shown that they want to win this game. Absolutely. They've had a couple opportunities with the fumble. It didn't work out on fourth down. And there you see, and then you see on this play, right, they go to a special play, and West does a great job to defense it by right away they jump on a quarterback instead of letting him have a big play. Because as a defense, you could say, okay, I'm going to jump back in coverage and get everybody covered. West decides we're going right after the quarterback, which is, it works. And it worked perfectly. We'll take a break, talk a little bit about more about this game. Don't go away. We will be rolling tape. We'll take a look at the uh, KSL playoffs. And here we go to halftime as we see Joe DiGiacomo, Joe DiGiacomo running for a Squadier score. We'll take a break and be right back. Don't go away. Sixty years ago, Bucks County farmers developed new methods of soil and water conservation. Their efforts helped to transform the small Honey Hollow watershed into a national historic landmark. Honey Hollow is now permanently preserved. Audubon's ongoing programs continue to prove that we can coexist with our natural environment. Be a part of the expanding programs and brighter environmental future. Bucks County Audubon, more than just bird watchers. Call 297-5880. And so, I get this phone call from this insurance company. Normally, I don't pay any attention to these kind of calls, but it sounded like such a good deal. What was the name of the company? You know, I hadn't heard of it before, but all insurance companies are pretty much the same, aren't they? How much money did you say? The premiums were a third of what I was already paying. Sounds too good to be true. I'm Diane Koken, Pennsylvania Insurance Commissioner. You need to be a smart shopper. If you have questions, call us at the toll-free number on your screen. Knowledge, it's your best policy. Isn't buying insurance supposed to make you feel safer? We are back at War Memorial Field. Bob Friedman along with Tom White on the field, John Price. What you're seeing right there is a great tradition. The CB West and CB East varsity and junior varsity cheerleaders getting together for a cheer at halftime. It is a tradition of the CB East, CB West football game. Tom, a game thus far that has gone, according to what we talked about, it's a low scoring game, it's 14 nothing to halftime. West has made the plays that they have had to make. East has made some of the plays that they have had to make, but the critical plays, West has been the better team on those particular times. Well, again, it's the times. little things. It's making that fourth down play. It's, you know, making that extra block, running a little bit harder. It's all the little things that add up, we know, over the years to make this West team such a great team. Well, you know what? 14 nothing. There hasn't been many teams all year that have been down 14 nothing against West at halftime. And if East is able to put the ball in there at the end of the half, it's 14-7. We're in a football game. We're still in a football game. So, but they have to come out their biggest challenge second half obviously is their west is going to get the ball they're going to have to hold them in downs and get it back and put points up i think early in the third quarter but if they let west come out and get a touchdown and it goes up 21 nothing that could be a well, very and, tough thing and the thing is you look back at the first half of the game east gets the ball in the opening kickoff drives down the field smartly down to the 35 yard line throws a fade pattern that james west makes a super play on to intercept at 10 from that turnover, West takes the ball and just plays smash mouth football right down the field. 90 yards, James West for the final two yards. Some great runs in there by Giacomo, by West, by Camburn on the plate. And they take the 6-0 lead with the kick failing. East gets the ball back, does not move it. West gets it back, and here's what I consider to be the turning point of this game thus far. The Giacomo carries the ball, fumbles it. Called by the referee, side judge, 
uh, a little shaky, kind of giving the ball to East a little bit early. It looked like dual possession. Nonetheless, East gets the ball. They move the ball downfield on a fourth and short where they had made it earlier. They, instead of giving the ball to their big guy, Holmes, they decide they're gonna go up the middle with Felicetti, and Felicetti gets stuffed on the play, on a great play by Bobby Warden. West gets the ball back at the 20-yard line, moves it right down the field to the mid midfield, uh, near midfield, where Phil DiGiacomo takes it and just shows tremendous speed and strength to go 51 yards. And I'll tell you, we, we've talked about Phil, what a great kid this is. Everything they've asked him to do, he's done it. He's done it with a smile on his face. He's a great leader on his team, one of the captains. But I'll tell you, the line play for West has been outstanding. Again, Nick Daly, Johnny Arsenal, Josh Sands at center, Otten in there, Gene Rich, guys, and even Varillo. Varillo at his tight end spot. Doesn't see the ball a whole lot, but I'll tell you what, he's doing a tremendous job blocking, and it's made a tremendous difference. Well, he difference made a big sack game. early in the and game. And he's had a, a sack. huge play. Yep. So we've come to the end of the first half as a CB East fan. They're going to play for us. We're going to go out as we listen to the Central Bucks East Patriot Band, one of the finer bands in the area. We'll take a break and be back for the second half kickoff. Listen to the band, and don't you dare go away. Radon test is about to begin. Radon can penetrate a concrete block. You can protect yourself from radon by wearing a gas mask. New homes can be built to protect your family from radon. Some people are immune to radon. When buying a home, you should always make sure it's been tested for radon. The Office of the Surgeon General strongly advises all homes be tested for radon. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. To find out how to get your family's home tested and made safer, call.
Bourbon one, National. We're back here at halftime. CBE, CB West, West up 14-0. We're going to go down to the field. John Price, he's got a special guest for I'm joined down on the sideline by Rob Lockery, 1987 Central Bucks East graduate, proud new father of uh, Grace Lockery and uh, husband of Kathy, the former Kathy Smith, area field hockey standout. But Rob, tonight as an East alum, 14 nothing. what are your thoughts on the game? Well, it looks like a classic East-West rivalry match. And, and as always, uh, West looks very well prepared. They seem to be all over Tingle. But you know me, I, I'm always pulling for East uh, down to the last minute. Proud East grad. Uh, more importantly, though, Rob, we're down here to talk a little bit about a project that you're very um, intricately involved in, and that's the CBE Stadium Fund project. We've talked about it a couple years down on the sideline at halftime of these games. Where do we stand? Well, I, I guess it's about two years ago or three years ago we did this on the sidelines here at the halftime, and, and a lot's happened in that time. Uh, the uh, grassroots committee has been very active over the last couple years with a lot of fundraising efforts, selling raffle tickets, uh, selling bricks. Over 800 bricks were sold for the stadium. All those efforts uh, helped to leverage uh, uh, the approval and the funding from the school board. So the school board uh, almost a year ago approved the funding for the stadium. And now we're at the last hurdle, which is uh, uh, Buckingham Township approvals. And we hope to get over that hurdle, hurdle over the next couple of months. And uh, hopefully maybe next year there'll be a stadium at CB East. For anyone who wants to get involved with the program still, are there still ways to get themselves involved? A absolutely. Uh, you can call the high school and ask for the athletic director's office. Uh, there's still ways to raise money. Uh, we're, we're looking to sell more bricks for the stadium. And we still need everybody's support uh, to make it through the approval process in Buckingham Township. That seems to be the last hurdle that we have to go through. We've gone through the land development process, and, and we're almost through it all the way, and we want to make this happen very soon. Okay, Rob, thanks a lot for joining us. What, like I said, former CBE standout receiver, and I'll send it back up to the booth. And we are back at War Memorial Field. There's a great job by... We're back here at War Memorial Field. Tom White, along with me, uh, Bob Freeman, is, and also Coach Mike Petton, retired Coach Mike Petton. Mike, a uh, few words on the first half of the game. Uh, your guys up 14-0. Well, I think the surprise uh, with everybody that's watched both teams is the dominance of the uh, the West defensive line. I, I think East game plan, and rightly so, based on uh, the previous games, is they were going to come out and go double tight and basically uh, run the ball right down the West throats. Uh, but our kids are playing a great game. Uh, it's certainly not over. But I, I think it's amazing. Uh, this has to be by far one of the better defensive performances I've seen out of the West team now it's, it's only a half but uh, you know East game plan obviously was to establish our running game and West is in that uh, eight man front and basically they've shut it down pretty good I think uh, offense offensive line for West especially on the ends they've actually attacked right. well, Shearer and Benz to a point where they've driven them four or five right. yards well, they're, off they're the out, they're putting more guys at the point of attack than East has defenders Mike Petton here here's, here's a nice run back That's, that's Ingram there. He, he takes the ball back, a nice run. He's going to take it up to about the 34-yard line. West has good field position. And Bob the, and I at the half were talking, Coach, that West comes down and puts a score in early here. That's going to be a big mountain for East to climb if they can yeah, do if that. If West gets another score, it's going to force East pretty much into uh, getting away from their basic game plan, which was running the ball with power. They're going to have to open up, start throwing the football, and, and Coach Carey is going to turn the blitzes loose with, with Potter and coming with the ends, and that could be real difficult. Now, you see the game plan right here is to attack the corner. It goes James West, you know, seven, eight yards. West does a good job. We talked to you earlier about how this kid could start for other teams because of some of the situations going on in the team this year. Fills in a quarterback. They put Pat Jarrett back at, at, on the defensive side of the ball and given this young kid, James West, an opportunity to run, and he's well, done he, a great right job. Right now, phenomenal game. That was a super interception that, you know, sometimes two or three plays can change the complexion of everything. But uh, he's, he's kept them honest inside with a couple trap plays. But you can see uh, the basic game plan is to turn the corner. And, well, I'll tell you and what. Mostly it's been with uh, Phil DiGiacomo. I'm gonna, I think you're going to see Cam burn a little bit more this half. A big second down play here for CB West. Second and we, three. We might finally have some play action here. Coach is calling for the play action. You got Camburn in motion. And it is that. And he's got a man wide open. It's Bobby Warden. He's down the sideline. He's got a block. He cuts inside. Brian Tingles 
and Mark Hughes catches him from behind at the 10 yard line and CB West three plays and they're down to the 10 yard line and we're gonna watch and see where they spot it. I, I, I guess they're gonna mark it at about the 12 and it's gonna be first and 10 for the Bucks. Big, big play and West looking right, to now, put now, some more now points Now the East up. defense, they really have to be wondering here, I guess uh, the first half West had what, not throwing the football one time? That's right. So that was a great call to, to, to loosen them up. And there was nobody out there on Ward and he catches the ball, he turns, he looks upfield. I think he was surprised that there wasn't anybody there. Here you got Ingram and Camburn split wide left. Now, now here, here they're gonna go wide or, or off tackle with the Giacomo. He's got him out man. Good job well, by that East a, that time. I think Benson and that, that crew did a nice job coach to string it out and not let right. the Giacomo square his shoulders. And uh, probably the second loss we're going to see on the night thus far for a West yeah, I, offense they, that's been almost unstoppable. They've been shifting into that formation, and I think that was an, an example where the East kids just recognized that play. They heard him a couple times and shifted over and were expecting Giacomo to go wide. Now second down and 14 for West. Adam Shaw coming in the game. We've seen him come in as periodically, and they they spread everybody out on the right. wing and throw the ball to him right. over the middle. Right. He, he's one of the uh, tight ends that can catch the football. Giacomo under center. Camburn goes in motion. And he's got a, a ball outside here. I believe this is Ingram. He's trying to turn a corner, and he makes a couple cuts, but Bence and Sheeran and the rest of these team homes are there, and they're going to shut that play down. Maybe a yard gain. It's going to be third and 13 for West. Coach, a little razzle-dazzle there on a part of Carey. Uh, right now again, faced well, with a Zach, Zach Ingram has great speed, and that was a good call. Uh, Got to give credit to the East. Uh, secondary came up and... Uh, you're talking 4-3-4 four, uh, four speed hitter. And here it is. They're, they're going to show motion left. There you see Camburn in motion. And Phil's going to work that way left, but then he gives the reverse back to, to Zach here. Nice job to get penetration into the backfield, force him wide. Right. Basically, and the secondary came up and made the play. Bobby Holmes there. The rest of the East defense. Pocock there, number four with uh, Hughes. And also number 20, Isringer. This is a critical series here that for West, they have to get at least three out of this. From the East standpoint, they have to make a stop. If they have to come back and, and get three scores the way the West defense is playing, they can do it, but it's, it's gonna be a lot more difficult than uh, making up two scores. Well, third down, third and 13 here. Really, this is two down territory for West, I would think, or you're gonna, you're gonna opt to kick the ball, and Bros has shown that he can do that as well. But here you are, you're in a booth, Coach. What do, you, what do you think Mike's thinking here at third and 13? Well, I think he has to, you know, throw into the end zone or get pretty close. Uh, he might try uh, tight end over the middle, 32's in the game. Uh, might try to sneak uh, Camburn out of the backfield, get him the football. But I think you have to throw the ball. And then if you miss it, you go for the three points. Jeff Johnson and Franny Golden split wide left. Jacques under center with Cam Byrne and West in the backfield. He fakes Ooh. and he's going to try to he's going to try to keep it. Phil breaks a tackle. He gets down. He's going to get about eight nine yards. It's going to be fourth and four, but a real courageous yeah, that, play that, that, by that was uh, Giacomo. A, that was just an arm tackle away from one of the great calls of the year. That the quarterback trap. Little quarterback trap. He just swings his hip like he's going to pitch it. Keeps it to, pulls it into a belly, and as you said, coach, one tackle well, away. Now we have fourth and about three, and we're thinking about what we're going to do here. And here's a replay. Let's talk about this. Here it is. You're going to show him he's going to open left like he's going to pitch the ball. Take the pitch. It's going to be a trap play. See Gene Rich blocking here comes down. The trap by 62, I believe. Johnny Arsenal. Broke a tackle at the line. West is going, Phil's rolling left. He's got a man in the flat. He's, it's gonna be very close to the fourth down. A great tackle on the play. That's number four, Matt Pocock. And we'll have to see the spot, but I think the initial spot right, right there by the referee is that he's gonna be about a yard short. And a, a 
probably the best defensive stand for East tonight. Certainly that uh, has to breathe li life back into East. Problem now is they have to go over 90 yards, but they got the offense that can do it. I think he had the right play call. The, the kid just comes up and makes a right. great tackle. Hey, you stop Cam Burn one on one in the open field, that's a great tackle. You know, they teach you when you're playing defensive back to come up and have your head on the outside so as the guy goes to turn, and I think po Pocock did a great job to really technique him and not let him square those shoulders once he caught the ball. It looks like we're going to have a timeout here, Coach CB East. And uh, we're going to do something here. We're going to bring uh, Bob Friedman in, and we're going to try to bring in another microphone here so we can have all three of us yeah. on. Yes, we're going to the great new technology, seeing if we can get the microphone. We have a third mic in the booth. It doesn't seem to be working, but we're trying to get it. So I'm back. Coach is still with us. Let's, uh, while we have the timeout, this is always a special game. And, and, and I just want to see if you can draw back on, on your memories right now. We have a moment. Do you have any one East-West game that sticks out above the rest at all? Uh, a win or a loss? Either way, <laughs> both are tied. We had one of those, too. Right. Well, you know, there's so many great games. Uh, the one we pulled out with a two-point conversion, Chris Cleland. Oh, yeah. It was kind of a miracle one. one where he jumped out of the uh, booth. The last one we lost. My, my son was part of that. I still wake up at nights, and I, I can hear the thump when they were blocking a field goal. Uh, Here we go. I think the memorable one to me was the 14-14 game when... Uh, had the big sack late in the game in the fourth quarter. Looked for all the world like East was going in for the, uh, I think that's the game that Moylan got hurt. And I think right, that, that was the one back. from coaching standpoint when we worked well with Moylan, a great passer, and we put in a lot of new pass plays. And when he went down in the first quarter was basically to rip up the game plan. We went with a, a gutty kid by the name of Putty Gilbert. As and the handoff uh, goes to Tingle, he'll get a little bit of yardage out over the five to the seven. But Putty Gilbert uh, basically was a running quarterback and a, uh, we went from about uh, 30 plays down to about 10 plays. And actually, you, you had to be proud of our kids just to hang in there and uh, of course East, uh, you know, mixed bag, they tied us, they, they were happy. But I think that was the time when the field goal was missed, they had a chance to, to put it they away. had it down around the 10 yard line, try to pass, and I can't remember who has came in from his defensive right. spot, but it right. sacked him about right. the 23 yard line, and they missed the field goal just wide, and they had some great field goal kickers back at that time. Can't Second down at about tackle. seven now, ball still inside the 10 yard right. line. Tangle trying to get wide. And nice he'll cut. do it. He'll be close right, to the first down. He's up to a first down. He'll be up to about the 14, depends on the spot. But yeah, that was the game that I remember best because they had they had the field. I think it was the soccer kids, two of the soccer kids, the soccer coach's sons, right. uh, were the kickers, and it looked for all the world. There was a real stiff crosswind at Delval that day, and it just blew it wide left. Yeah, well, you know the, the, the kickers they have the toughest job in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. when you don't do when you don't do your thing, everybody knows whatever number missed it. And the other tough job is to be a D back when you get beat. It's on third and short, the handoff goes, and it will be Tingle, and I don't know, I think he's he crossed the, he the line. The I think he's got down. the first down. Let's see if Tommy White's there for us now. I, I don't, I think I am. I think I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you basically want to play the game so it doesn't go down where you put the game in the hands or in the foot of the kicker. Yeah. Because when, when they miss them, you know, you, you can't blame the kid because the game is never really decided when you analyze it from the coaching standpoint with just one play. Well, I'll tell you, the, the Cleveland play is my proudest because my, I actually made ESPN on that one. When they used to have the high school thing, right. they, they, they did my call on that. Then that was a great play, just rolling, 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 and throwing. So first down for CB East. That's going to be to Hughes on the end around. Well strung out by West. He'll get about three, but it was a well strung out play. The, what's showing tonight uh, the advantage in West team speed? You know, they're a little bit out man size wise, but uh, that was certainly an advantage they felt they had coming in. Well, I think that Tommy mentioned at the beginning of the game that they needed to overcome the big defensive ends for, for East. And thus far, they've done that. I made a comment in the early in the game that I, 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 West has looked strong in the past, but they were firing off the ball so fast early on, it almost looked, they were, looked like they were beating the snap cap. Well, they, they got five guys down, and instead of uh, waiting and catching the East, uh, players usually get a, a good push. The West guys were really attacking them. 
as a In other words, the expression is uh, the defense is blocking the blocker. Don't let him get into you. We've That's seen it. We've seen that play a couple times now tonight. Josh just having a tough time getting that ball out there to the receiver on that play. Hughes. Yeah, he threw that ball to Hughes, and he bounced it a little bit. It looks like he's kind of rushing his pass, Coach. It looks like he really feels a little bit of the rush right now. But deep in the territory, they moved the ball out well. They've got the ball out to about the... Uh, about the 17 to 18 yard line. Now it's a third down yeah, at about this seven. Is, this is a situation where East likes to draw play. West is staying with a five man rush, man, man coverage. Fella Setti. Oh, he's going to go, uh, gonna try go up. Fade. Oh, great catch. Great catch. That ball was thrown exactly where it had to be thrown. And let's see who that was. Was that Hughes? Yeah, it was Hughes. We saw and that he play. Was well guarded on the play. He can't we knock the defense, but. Beautiful throw. We ball. saw it earlier in the first half. He tried to go to that on the third play. James West, West, West picked it off. There, Hughes stays with it. Great concentration, catches the ball. And I think we have an injured player on the sideline. They're attending to him down there. Let's Gotta take get a the look replay. at this again. I, t I tell you, it was pretty good coverage. It's just a great, it was great coverage. Great catch. Beautifully thrown ball. Yeah. The fellow said he'll get it here. He's looking away, he pumps there. Now he's coming back to Hughes. As you said, coach, he's really well covered. Just a really well thrown ball. Good concentration on the part of Hughes here as he's gonna catch it over his shoulder. And the defensive back, Zach Ingram, does a good job to hang on, make the tackle, and not and let it go for six. On the play. They're working on Ingram right now. He's down right on the sideline in front of the West bench. I think you may have gotten the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, a lot of times you'll fall on the guy as you're tackling him, and, you know, they got the work in the belly there. I think he'll probably be okay. John Price, what do you have down there? What's happening with Zach? Zach's down on the ground right now. Earlier in the game, Angelo Varillo was being worked Burmeister on on the there, sideline. Uh, Tonight being a warmer working night, they're working on, on the cramp. So uh, there's some cramping going on down here because of the weather. I'll send it back up to you guys. He looks like he's going to be all right. And we are back, Zach Ingram was held up. He might have been just a cramp. He's, he's a little ginger on that leg, so they're gonna work him on the back bench. 5.40 to go in the in the uh, set third quarter. Clock running. On first and 10, Felicetti on Tingle behind Holmes, and Tingle is brought down after about a four-yard gain. That looked like it was going to gain a little bit more than it did, but the linebackers you know, did a good hey, job. James West. James did a great job, came up, made a nice tackle. We talked all night how tough it is to take Brian Tingle down. James West, you said it before, he would be a starter for a lot of teams, and uh, he plays his role beautifully for West. There's no question. Uh, in having to go both ways tonight is pretty tough on a junior, but he's an outstanding athlete, and he's a gutty performer. So five. And, uh, here's the uh, the heavy front again. Now they're in man coverage. So second and five, handoff goes to Tingle. Tingle will get two, three yards, and he's getting tough yards. He's getting beat up out there. Yeah, when they're in man coverage, I think Cam Burns on them one-on-one, -on -one, and there's nobody tougher in the league than, than Cam Burns. Tom mentioned that early. He said it looked like they had a spy on him, especially there was one play where he looked like he broke through and a hand came out of nowhere and tripped him up, and it was Cam Burns. That's when Tom was talking about the spy, the man on him, and he's doing a great job. Dave Camburn, so many skills, and this, tonight he's asked to do something very special. So far, Tingle has not been a major factor. Does a nice job to slip behind the lead block and make the tackle, so he lets that lead fullback run by him and then slips in there and, and makes the tackle. Well, it's a third down and a long three ball just inside West Territory at the 48-yard 40, line, we'll call it. Power eye look. Handoff goes to Tingle, he'll break it up. He's got the first down, gets inside the 40 to the 35 yard line. Just good power blocking there, well, coach. Tingle's the kind of guy that just keeps coming right at you. You know, he's very physical, he's very tough. And he's just as strong on the, you know, uh, the 30th carry as he is on the first. So it's a situation where, you know, West cannot let down. Well, this is a case for East where you don't want to get too greedy. You still have three, almost four minutes of this quarter and the whole fourth quarter ahead of you. Move the ball down there. I think the first quarter when they got that drive, they tried the long fade pass. I think they may have gone for too much too early and it, West made a great interception on the play. Now they get the ball and they hand it off to Tingle and now he's got the field. He's got about nine on that carry and he's hitting that line fast. 
There, there they had Jarrett stunning into the line. He misses him in the backfield, but Pat had a shot at him early. But Brian does a nice job to make a cut at the line of scrimmage and get about eight yards. I think the uh, East offensive line seems to be coming off with a little more authority in this drive. And that's, I think that's what Coach Green talked to him at halftime. They have to, they have to use their strength and size and try and just penetrate more. And Tingle really seems to want the ball now. Second down and two. And of course, this will be Holmes, I believe, in the carry. And he won't get much. He'll get maybe a yard. A lot of black and gold shirts on the ball there. You have Fignani in there, Gene Rich, Camburn getting off the ground. You got to love that as a coach to see all those hats on the ball. Yeah, and those kids are, are attacking. They're just not waiting, and you can't do that against a big offensive line. Third and short, expect them to come with some linebackers. Absolutely. Well, the play that I've liked that, that East has used is a little looking pass to Hughes. It's worked a couple of times. Kid Hughes, number two, does a nice job. But they have the run looking at it right now. And it is a handoff to Tingle. He cuts it up. He's got the first down, and then some inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. He does that so well. He looks like he's going to try to get the ball outside and cuts back and gets the first down. Coach, as you said, I think the East offensive line's starting to get a little momentum. So the sticks move. They'll get a fresh four with 2.20 to go in the third quarter. 14 to nothing, West leading East. But East on a drive now at the uh, West 27-yard line. If you look at the West defensive line, several of those guys are playing both ways. Right. So conditioning might become a factor here. It's a warm evening for mid-October. Temperatures in the high 60s right now. As the handoff goes to the uh, a new back in the game, number 30. That's Mike Zopp. Mike Zopp, he'll switch on and off playing linebacker for East tonight. Big guy, only a junior. And uh, he sees some time in there. He gets a nice run on first down, four yards. It's, that's a good run for uh, East on that first down play. Take a look at that again, and Zod will get the ball. A short gain on the play. Back get, that, action. get that momentarily. Second down and about six. Again, the power look. And off play action, Felicetti with a little pitch pass to Holmes, and Holmes will get close to the first down. Depends on where they stepped out. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. You know, when they ran that play, Mike, I don't know if you've seen East play. They've ran that play to tingle a lot, and they haven't run it tonight. That's the first time they actually ran that little flat pattern. Right. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of it there. It was successful for them. Yeah, that was a good call because obviously uh, they've they're been run, running run, off run. the safety. Yep. Now, now that, you know, they could go play action here, but, you know, the probably the safe thing to do and the best thing would be just try to get the first down. And they got the back to do it between Ting Tingle and Holmes. Holmes has got the size. Tingle has got the thrust. I like Holmes on this play, but we'll see what happens. Power look. And this time they give it to one of the upbacks, and again, is that Zop again? I think that might have been Holmes. It was Holmes or Zop. We're gonna catch, it's tough to read these numbers. Let's see, we're getting them up there. Yeah, that was Mike Zop who takes it down. We got a West player yeah, down, West we got a timeout, down. so we got a chance to uh, talk about this. We're gonna replay. Now this is a handoff to Zop, and you see how pumped he is. Nice push by the offensive line here. Bent's getting a piece of his guy. They're running hard there. Good tackle right there to come up and make that tackle on a big Mike Zop. I think that's the safety James West. Sure is. James He's having a monster right game. Try to get a, a name on a play, hurt player for you. We'll see who we've got there. They also have two. I'm wondering. I'm just taking a look on the side. That's Jim Fignani, number seven. He's their middle linebacker. He's had a very good night. He's down. Looks like he's dinged a little bit. A lot of times you get your bell rung in there, and you know you need to stay down and get those cobwebs out. Looks like Bobby Warden's going to maybe come in for him. Coach, the one thing I noticed on Zop's run, he stay, he kept his center of gravity low to the ground. On those kinds of carries, you need to keep it down there so that you can maintain your balance. He really got, hit the line low, held onto the ball, did a real nice job, got maximum yardage on it. Yeah, well, you always, you know, try to coach body lean because I don't care how big you are, if you run straight up and down, uh, you're, you're not going to be an effective runner. And when you get these big fullbacks, like the, the kind we've had and East has this year, you know, if they have good body lean, you just don't get a good shot. You're hitting a thigh, you're hitting a shoulder, and you're probably going to bounce off. 
and the West faithful up on their feet trying to keep to get their defense to buckle it down. First down and goal to go, ball at the seven yard line. It's a handoff, it's to Zappa, I believe again, and this time there is nowhere to go. A lot of hats that time you get. Shawl in there, 32 in there on the ball. Looked like He's a, active. Looked like a 5-3 and they brought the linebackers. You know, at this point, when the team has you inside the 10, you just have to sell out. When I, when I say sell out, you have three linebackers, and, you know, you bring them all. You're bringing them. Every gap's filled, and you're, you've got a responsibility to fill that gap. Power look again. Now man goes in motion. On second down, it's Tingle. He's got the, he got corner. Oh, and Camburn spies him and keeps him from getting outside. I thought he, I don't know, Coach, you're looking at me. He's looking at me. If he stays to the outside, I, I wonder if he gets in. But he tries to cut back on Camburn, and it's uh, knocked down. It'll be third third goal at Coach, the four. I think he bought Camburn's speed. He saw the angle, and I think he stopped instead of keeping it, on it's going. It's amazing. I thought he had the corner, and... Maybe he just saw Camburn coming and felt like I can't beat this here guy. Here he comes. The corner. Let's take a there look. There it is. It gets outside. He's got the ball in the right hand. You got to love it. And here, you know what? I think uh, Camburn Camber was got the get angle there. on him. He Absolutely. Good... So that will end the third quarter. A big quarter. No scoring there. East Hell will start inside the seven yard line of West as we start the fourth quarter. Coach, all right, let's take a go down the field. John Price, what's the story on the injured player? Update on number seven, Jim Fignani. Fignani went down with a little bit of a shoulder uh, injury. Dr. Burmeister seems to think that that won't be a problem, and he'll be back. Also, walking off the sideline on that last play, I kind of noticed Gavin Potter seemed to be favoring uh, a shoulder as well and took his helmet off. I'll stay on top of that and let you guys know what's going on. Back up top. And you look at the injuries right now, you say you've got, there's some tough games coming up for West. You've got North Penn on the horizon. You've got some big games there. The little dings you hope don't uh, carry through the rest of the season. Well, in a game like this, when you're playing against big people, uh, and the hitting is so ferocious, uh, th this is something that uh, you almost come to expect. That uh, you know, hopefully it'll work out for you, but you know, you may pay the price with some injuries. Well, they have Truman. You just hope they're not going to be that serious. Well, you have Truman, who's always dangerous. Pensbury, who can give you trouble, and then of course North Penn. You want to be strong for those. Right now, the ball resting at the three-yard line. You've got third and goal. You got strong side, wide side to the right, and you got to think they're going to try some type of a, a of a, a sweep look or some type of a rollout here. It's, that's me. Well, you know, it's you might be thinking uh, the way we run the ball all year. I got two downs to get four yards. Right. Yep. Let's go with our strength. And that's what they're that's going. What they're going to do. They're going to give it to Tingle. He's to the five, to the three, to the goal line. Is he in? He's in. Brian Tingle puts it into the end zone for the touchdown, and East is within eight points. It's 14 to six right now, and we got ourselves a football game, folks. Well, coach, you were right. They went with the strength. They want power football. They got the fullback leading that play, and Brian Tingle runs hard west. A great fight at the goal line. He was actually they... stopped at about the uh, one yard line, and just effort got him across the try for point is up it's strong it's good and we have 11:53 to go in the fourth quarter it's 14 to 7 let's take a look at that replay on the touchdown as tingle would not be denied good push by tingle as he gets well, watch the, the offensive line play too everybody's pushing everybody's nice blocked by 47 pat sheeran and tingle you're right look at james weston and he's just chugging that's a great yeah, battle. That's a great battle. Three, three guys, the overpowered to get in there. We got a guy down. Looks like I a think, little cramp. I think he's. I think that may be Ingram again. But Bob, uh, Bob, and coach, coach, you said it. Brian Tingle is going to give you everything on every play, even as the fourth quarter. If he's run it 30 times, play number 30, he's giving it to you. And I'll tell you what, this is going to be an exciting fourth quarter. It is going to be an exciting fourth quarter. West will get the ball back. I got to think that they will try to connect because they have been able to run the ball well against East uh, thus far this game. I think they're going to try and melt the clock down a little bit here. Well, you know, you just stay with your game plan. Uh, play action passes. They still have been successful getting to the corner. I think you might see Camburn a little more, although they have uh, been putting Warden in a tailback and he's made, made some nice runs. Well, at this point, you mentioned it, Coach, the fatigue factor starts to set in. It is a warm evening. It's a warmer evening than they've been used to the past few weeks. 
you have a little bit of cramping going on out there. And the, be and the conditioning where Joe Hallman comes in is the conditioning in the fourth quarter. These kids have got to be got to really suck it up now this is the first game that West has been in where they've really been in a ball game in the fourth quarter it's going to test them right now well there's, there's no question it's one of the uh, difficulties in, in having contests that aren't uh, too well com competed and you blow teams out uh, you, you're a lot of these guys haven't played uh, four quarters since when yeah and that's one of the reasons a, a coach may keep a club in there when maybe they should come to the bench score wise because he knows he's going to get into a barn burner down the road with a team like, let's say, CB East, and you're going to need your kids to be able to go four quarters. It's like a, a, a fighter who never has gone beyond the fifth round. He has a lot of knockouts, yeah. and then he has to go with a 12-rounder, and he doesn't have a condition. And it's a no-win situation for that coach because, as you know, if you keep your starters in, then you start hearing the cries where you're rounding the score up. And you right. got to keep the kids in because right. you got to have yeah, them play There's no quarters. question. There's a lot to be said about having some close games early. So when something like this happens down the stretch, you've been there. James West takes it at his five, okay. cuts oh. it inside. Oh, nice open field tackle, because it looked like West had some running room, but a great open field tackle. Do we have the number of that player? That's number 43 on the tackle there. Uh, let's see if we got that here. That's Drew Maguire. Yeah, if he doesn't make that uh, tackle, West has another 15 yards. Absolutely. Yeah, he looked like he was about ready to break in a seam. Now, this is a big series for sure. So here's the situation as we have it. 11.47 to go in the fourth quarter. 14 to seven, the Bucks lead the Patriots. East has just scored a touchdown to cut the lead in half. Phil DiGiacomo leads him up over the ball. West the up back. Frank Golden in motion inside. It's a handoff to the tailback. Oh, breaking it up big time is Bob Warden and Warden will take it out toward midfield to about the 42 yard line. Bobby really got off the ball, explosion, great line surge, and gets up there, breaks a tackle. West needed that. That was a great misdirection play. Right now, the East defense is so fired up. Once you fake to that fullback, as they did, and come with that counter scissors, there was a nice hole there. Coach, good Carey, effort. Coach Carey likes to call. Let's take a look at this again, Coach, and see what we've got. Fake to the fullback. They're going to kick out the uh, defensive end. Ward led nice spin move on that on second. So it's first and 10 ball at the 42 yard line. Backs in the eye. The pitch will go wide. Warden with a tough pitch behind her. The play never really got a chance to develop. They were fortunate they didn't lose the football on that one. Yeah, he bobbled the handoff. He was coming forward a little bit, which you don't want to do on a pitch. Drew Bornstein from his linebacker spot comes up. You're right. The pitch is bobbles. It, it causes problem with the timing. It has to slow down, and before you know it, the defense is up in making penetration, making now, a play. They fake the wing back around to uh, Zach Ingram, and they might come back to that later. Bobby Warden coming out, maybe having some equipment problems. It looks that way right now. Franny Golden in, Camburn in, second and 11, Bob. Big play. Now we have the backs are split right you now. You might see the draw play to Camburn here. Giacomo, long count, and it's the counter, it's give, give to Camburn, you're right, Camburn's got the first down and then some. The delayed uh, counter to Camburn, and it worked beautifully. Some good blocking, the lead block in there, springs him on the linebacker, and Camburn, we know what great speed he has, Mr. Excitement, first down. It looks like they were taking advantage of the East, really, the tenacity. East is firing out after the first fake, and they seem that they bought the fake. Well, right now, you know, emotion's a great thing, but uh, East is so fired up. If they're going after that first fake, it's a couple plays now where they, they went after the fullback, and that was a little crossbuck action. And again, they're kicking trap in the end which is a good move because they're so big at uh, 230 and mm -hmm. 225. Again, Franny Golden comes into motion, and again, the handoff goes to Camburn, and he'll get some short yardage. Oh, and he almost broke okay, away. Second effort. That's Mark good, Hughes, Brian Tingle on the tackle. tackle. Now, they'll give him the, uh, uh, the forward progress on that play. It'll be second down and eight, as he almost broke, that, broke the tackle there, but and it's a gain of, call it a long two, make it second and eight. We have 9.45 to go in regulation, 14 to seven. The Bucks lead, they have the ball at the 43 yard line of CB East. Bob, we haven't talked about it tonight, but big crowd here. Oh, 
I, I guess over 12, 13,000 people, standing room only. 9.28 to go, 14-7. Quick pitch. Pitch goes, and carrying the ball, getting the first down yardage on the quick pitch, and a nice play there to Bob Warden, and Warden is earning his stripes tonight. He and Cambridge are just taking over this, this quarter. I don't, I don't think Bob started the game, so he was a little fired up. I think he admitted it wasn't one of his better games last week, and there's nothing like not starting some player to get him motivated. <laughs> Offensive line, good job the last couple plays. Nick Daly and that crew really doing a good job now, picking up, picking it up, and keeping this offense going. So first and 10, the ball now resting at the 34-yard line. To Giacomo, hands it to James West. He's got yardage, he's gonna go! James West, touchdown, Central Bucks West. Broke through the line and he broke the hearts and it looked maybe the backs of Central Bucks East as he busted through. The best backup back in the Suburban One Conference, James West, the touchdown. And I'll tell you, the coach is smiling right now. Let's Here's take a, a look replay at it. on this. Oh, we don't have it right now. Talk about the run. Let's talk about James West a little bit. Great well, blocking you know, up front. Normally, that play has been by a Pichotti and an Armstrong and <laughs> James West. Whatever he is, pound for pound, he's one tough player. Kick is up by Bross and it's good and it's 21 to 7. Well, let's take a look, see if we can get that replay. Just, uh, you know what they call the slant, fullback off tackle. It's going to reverse pivot. Some good blocking at the point of attack and there's a great cut. Great nice cut. thing about that, you have a running back at fullback. So once he breaks into the secondary, pretty tough to catch. Well, Nick Daly. Went downfield, if you saw it on the replay, he sealed it off. When he broke through the line, one of the linebackers is about to cut in. Daly went upfield. And all he did was get in his way. Right. It wasn't a killer block. He just gets in his way, shields him, and he and he, he makes a nice cut off that touchdown west. Nick Daly. Right, right. Those are the little things that people often don't see. Somebody hustling downfield, and, and Daly's block was probably the difference between maybe a, an eight-yard gain and a touchdown. Well, I remember this because, Mike, you were came to one of our uh, little coaching clinics once, and you said you start teaching downfield blocking August 15th, not the day, day of the game. And I think that was a great comment, stuck with me for a long time. Well, you, That's yeah. something you gotta work on every day. And you have to get really team players because when do they really get the recognition? You know, coaches in game film will point out, but uh, rarely uh, is it ever put in the paper about a key downfield block, but that's what team football is all about. You know, we, we call it the winning edge. Those those little things to get you to the extra yardage. Bross will kick it off. Again, directional kick. It'll be short. It'll be fielded at about the 12-yard line by Hughes. He'll try to cut it outside, get to the sideline. Does a pretty nice job, and he'll be knocked out of a 27-yard line. Tom has made a lot of comment, and very positive comment. And now that we have you up here with us, let's talk a little bit about the importance of a Joe Hallman and what he brings to the team. Well, first of all, he's strictly a strength coach. So what that does, it alleviates having a, a coach who's come in after a hard practice to go in and, and expend his uh, time and energy. Uh, it's just been a, a blessing. Coach Carey used to do that, and you get a guy like Joe Holman, now Coach Carey can uh, spend more time with the offensive line and the other duties uh, that he's used to. Felicetti under a rush, and Paul's knocked down, and he was under a... Furious rush, got the ball away. But let's see who's on the, uh, that was- uh, Jimmy Fignani, yeah, Fignani, good pressure, didn't let Josh get outside. Give Falsetti credit, we talked about it earlier in the game, he ate that ball last time, had a loss. There he has a mindset to get rid of it and not lose the yards. And the other thing about Joe, he's, he's very competent. He's, he's always changing the routine. He's always in touch with other weightlifting coaches throughout the country. And he's really good for kids. You know, he'll, he'll, get, he'll get after him, and when a kid needs a pat in the back, yeah, he'll be there to do that. Well, they have they have shown their medal tonight. So far, they have, looks like they may have have seen their way through it, but East still has some time here. Second and ten, back to pass, Felicetti. He'll go to his left. He's under a rush. He'll throw it away. To avoid the sack, he'll throw it away, and just some great coverage downfield and some serious pressure again by the defense uh, for West. Josh having a tough time rolling to his left. He had pressure on him and had to get away, got hit pretty hard, but again, a smart thing to eat, throw that ball away. You know what else I noticed tonight, and this is something we talked about earlier. 
Only two flags the whole game. They were right in a row at the end of the half, but we, this has been a very, the, the referees, the, the officials have let them play this game. Yeah, that's a tribute to the players and uh, both coaching staffs. Sometimes when you get uh, an excitable game like this, you'll have a lot of mistakes. But, you know, the focus and the intensity on both sides has made for a well-played game. So it's third and ten. Felicetti with a short drop again, throws it behind his intended receiver. And it'll be fourth down, and it appears the Patriots will have to punt. And just feel the air going out of the Patriots balloon right now. As the, the Buck faithful rise to their feet to applaud the defensive efforts of West. Mike getting a few new shirts in the game. Mark Magnuson, number nine, he's gonna run the defense now. Also in their 75 for West, one of the younger Dennis Riling, he's actually a, a senior, getting a chance to play in a big game. Did not mention po Matt Pocock was the intended receiver, almost made a real nice catch on the ball thrown slightly behind him. Punt is away, it's a high kick, it's a wobbler. It'll be fielded there by Cameron. Oh, he's got a wall. He's oh, got he's a got wall. the wall, look at that. He's got the wall. He <laughs> oh, he's gonna go down inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. Oh, and it was sprung loose. The Giacomo sprung him loose with a block, and then he just had the wall set up. Yeah, Brian Hogan from East was trying to run from behind, and somebody peels back and makes a nice block to chip him off the, the heels of Camburn, and Cam Camburn, coach, uh, one block away from breaking yeah, I, it. You know, if I'm coaching against Camburn, I, I want to kick it out of bounds, I think. Yeah, why would you ever kick to any of your guys back there, right? I thought Council Rock, last week did a great job every time they kicked the ball to the sideline and really made it hard for you to run those balls back. So the Bucks have the ball back now at the 38 yard line. A keeper by the Giacomo, it doesn't work as the defensive line saw it and he'll gain maybe a yard, yard and a half on the play. Bob Graham on the tackle, 73, nice job to really watch his keys and take to Giacomo down. He doesn't make that play if you know what Phil can do with it. Yeah, that's the type of play that usually gets no gain or you break it big. Right. We so, saw it earlier, Phil was able to break the tackle and get it down and eventually it has, score. Has a tendency to keep the linebackers honest inside. They can't be flying out of there. Now you have the tendency to say, well, you want to play the smash mouth and just push him back. And just think right now, I just got a feel in the pit of my stomach, somewhere there's going to be a pass. Well, I, I don't think you're going to see a pass. <laughs> Not on here. this play, no, because they're all in. And it's there a handoff to West. He's going again. He needs the pass. West behind blocking. He breaks it inside the 15 to the 10-yard line. James West, as we say, who needs the pass when you got the big fullback there? James West, great explosion. I think is one of his biggest strengths as he gets off the ball so quick. He's into the secondary, and he, he runs with his eyes. He really knows how to cut and make, a, uh, make guys miss. There you see it. He almost gets in the end zone. West just outside the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 on the 11. 7.20 and counting. They're up 21 to 7 and on the march. Ball you down. Know, this is good old, you know, power football. Ball down to the 11-yard line. Man yeah. in motion is Camber and backs are split. Takes a look, he goes around the end, does to, to Giacomo, he'll get it inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Throws the linebackers with a little bit of a look pass look. Yeah, with the, that, that was tough defense there. You had three or four East players just come up and sell out. And the Giacomo is not easy to bring down and there was quite a collision. There is an injury there. Three East player down the field, we'll see who that number is. As they, they tend to, but you also have to look, I, I realize it's only mid-October right now. We'll talk about that momentarily. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Here we go again. This is going to be about smoking in the house, isn't it? Listen, this poor guy's been picked on enough. His home is his castle. He has rights, he has privileges, he has... His, 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 his. Chaos, kids. 
You have kids and you're smoking in the house? It's just little kids. What's the matter with you? Are you kids to get pneumonia? No. Bronchitis? Asthma? Do I have to light a fire under you? Get up. Would you need to smoke outside? What? Smoke outside. <sighs> Make the right choice. Go out for your kids. And we are back at War Memorial Field in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Bob Friedman along with Tom White and the coach, Mike Patton Sr. J uh, John Price on the sidelines. The injured player is Mark Hughes, and he's off the field on his own power. Might have gotten just dinged a little bit late in the game, cramping up a little bit. But the situation is this. The Bucks now with the ball at the nine-yard line, second down and about eight. To Giacomo with his team leading 21-7. It is a handoff, it is to West. He breaks in, it's a five, is he in? Do they have him? No, they have him down. Oh, they give him a touchdown. Touchdown, James West. I'll tell you, what a great effort at the end. He got hit, knew he was going down, and just lunged for the goal line. The official didn't see the ball, had to run up the goal line to catch it. Well, the side judge he, caught he, it. He did a good job and, and caught the touchdown. James West having a great game. 27 but I, uh, I think it's safe to say he's, he's in the running for player of the game. I, I, would, I, would I would say, say the that, chances coach. Are re, re, I, I, he's got my vote, let's put it that way. Not that I have one. Ross with the extra point, it's up and good. What I wanted to talk to you about before the break is we'll take a look at the replay momentarily with James West. Another great run by West. Here it is. Watch the line surge, too. Johnny Arsenal, Josh Sands. There's Gene Rich there, the guard. Nick Daly. Good explosion here, and Mr. West is going to run. Good block there by the yes. lead guy. He gets a hit there by Tingle, and he lunges Spins. for the goal line touchdown. Spins away you know, getting back to Joe Hallman, I, I mean, you're seeing the result of all that weightlifting, and just on that play there, there was a, a, quite a display of strength. Well, I think what I was, what I was saying to you when we went to the break before, it's mid-October, I realize that, but you've got, and, and you don't want to look too far ahead. But the playoffs have got to, you, you've got to be thinking just in the back of your mind. You want to get your team ready in the event that you're on the playoffs. And a blessing in disguise with the Giacomo quarterback gives you another, gives you reps under center. Right. If Oriole, if and when Oriole does come back, you've got the Giacomo in the event of an injury there. You've got the Giacomo in the backfield. You've got West getting rep time. You've got Camburn. You've got Ingram. This team looks at the skill positions and as good or better than the team that was that won the championship last year. Well, you know, when you, you made a good point. When you're missing someone, you're worried it's really going to hurt the team, but now you have a new fullback in there, and look what you've gained. You gained depth. Uh, you have the Giacomo now with a couple games under his belt. Oriole comes back. He goes back to fullback, uh, the Giacomo, and you, West can come in at, at tailback and has great confidence for the game he played. So it, it turns out to be a big plus. Ross will kick off again. This time he'll kick a ground ball, and it's taken by the up back. That's Holmes, and Holmes will get it up to about the 35-yard line. You know, we didn't talk. We haven't talked about Andrew Bross too much either. Andrew's done a nice job in the directional kicking game all year long. He's really stuck him in the situation. The Rock game last week, his kicks made a big difference there with the two recovered you know, fumbles. You, got, you know, we got into the situation we talked about it before. If you kick deep in high school. You know, you may tackle them on the 15, but you got these four or five burners who are liable to, you know, bring it out to the 50-yard line or go all the way. So uh, this doesn't look good at times, but when you see where the other team gets the football and, and there's some miscues, there's some fumbles, and they're not going to bring it back all the way on you. Most of the uh, first team still in the game as Felicetti is in a quarterback. Felicetti with a deep handoff to Tingle. He's got some room. He breaks it out. And now he doesn't have room, and again, it's Camburn. You talk about players of the game, the quiet player of the game, maybe Dave well, Camburn. Let's hope Coach Carey's all right. He just got run over here, but he's a pretty tough guy. <laughs> but that, that was an example of uh, the West speed. You know, Tingle made a good outside move, and, you know, four West players just closed the gap and, uh, you know, kept them for a... a, a basically a four-yard game. Well, the only thing that concerns me, Camber is a little bit limping a little bit back, going back to the huddle. He's played a tough game. He is, well, you to, know, to Cam me... Camber would always limp a little bit, but every time I would... 
look to get him out, he would say, I'm okay. And he has been the unsung hero of the game. He's had a shadow, Brian Tingle. That is not an easy job. There, there he is right now. He's, he's spy on Tingle. They're going to come with Potter off the corner. And now he got a pass, and it's completed to Pocock, but he'll get nowhere. Zach Ingram Zach gets him, Ingram. brings him down. John Price, you have an injury report. What you got there? Number two for Central Bucks East, Mark Hughes, went out with a stinger in his right shoulder. They're working on him on the sideline. They've got him stretching it out, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. So I'll send it back up to you guys. We might see him. I'm not sure. There you see, there you see another play by the defensive secondary of West. One-on-one -on -one tackles. Zach Ingram does a great job not to let Pocock break away because we saw in that first series, very first series of the game, he was able to break a tackle and get a first down. They haven't had it happen since, Coach. Yeah, if, if you miss that tackle, you know, the guy's gone. Nobody so, there. You know, Zach's been playing a great game. He stopped a couple of those plays. Third down and six, the ball. Right, we're we're going to have heat off the corner. Here comes Potter. And that's his Holmes, and Holmes looks like he's got the first down. That was a good uh, job by Potter. He came off the corner on a blitz, saw it was a trap up the middle, turned around, uh, made the tackle for, uh, you know, a modest game. Well, I said first down. I may be premature here. The spot was not, I'm sure not what Larry Green would have liked. Looked like he could. Honestly, Coach looked like he had the first down, and they just put the ball back. It was a right foot set down, I guess you could say. Well, sometimes they work out in your favor, and sometimes <laughs> they go the other way. What would you say, Coach? Is it 50-50, or is it 60-40 that it works out your way? Well, from your standpoint... 30 years now. From your standpoint, it looks like they're always going against you, but <laughs> I think if you're objective, they kind of work out 50-50. Yeah, yeah. This is a first down for East. They'll get the ball keep the ball with under five, yeah, five minutes. He pretty much has to throw uh, just about every down now, and they're going to have to start throwing deep. There are three scores down with uh, less than five minutes. Well, he's trying that short drop, and it seems like West is keeping their bodies up. They're not be, uh, letting themselves be cut, and they've been getting their hands up. I don't think Phyllis City has seen the field the way he would like to. Short drop. He pumps. It's a pump and go. He's going to go for Pocock. And Pocock, I don't think Pocock ever saw the ball. Never saw it because he looked, the ball came over his head, and then he looked back, and it was already by him. I don't think he saw it either. That's a timing plan, I think. Pocock took his move. Fellas said he may have thrown it a split second before he wanted to. You look up, and you see those lights, and you can lose it real quick. And that's a play usually, roll, usually runs with Hughes. Hughes is on the right. sideline with the ding shoulder, so you're right. It's a timing thing. Maybe that's not something Pocock and Josh have had a chance to work on. Pocock just back this week after uh, injuries himself. Second and 10, the ball still at the 46-yard line of East. They trail West 28-7, four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Backs are in the eye. Deep handoff goes to Holmes, and Holmes got some good yardage. He'll break it into West Territory down to the 35-yard line. Good call, Coach. They're spread out looking for the pass, but it's right up the middle. There's a fumble on the play. Bobby Holmes is pointing to the ground like it was down. Let's see but what we got. Let's see what they do here. The whole bench on the east side is pointing to the ground, but I think I just saw an official. Uh, looks like they're discussing. They're going to discuss this. They're giving it to West. They're going to give it to West, and Larry Green is beside himself. Larry Green's about five yards out on the field, and I'll tell you what. I'd like to see the replay. Here it is. Here's Let's the replay take a look. right Let's see here. Where he goes down. That's hard to say. We might, we might need to look at that. It looked like maybe it was coming out as he was going down. But the thing is, if his knee is down and he has possession is where it it's is. It's a tough call. Yeah. It's a tough call. And very inconclusive there. I wonder if we get another look at that. I mean, we'll take a look at it after this play if we can. First and 10, backs are in the eye. West the up back. The Giacomo quarterback, Camber in motion. It is a handoff to West, and he'll get very little yardage on the play. Let's see if we can take a look at this again. Now, let's see where he is. Now, here he comes. Remember, it's the knee. I got to tell you, it looked, looked like maybe he was down, but it's hard to tell. Tough call. Looked like he was punched out. His knee that was either just barely off the ground or, or just on the ground. Bottom line is they made the call. It's West's ball. It's a short game. But I, I, but La Larry Green was about six, seven yards out on that field, and he was furious. Backs in the eye. Deep handoff goes to Bob Warden. Warden will get it. He'll take it for about four more yards. 
and this is just trying to melt that clock down inside three and a half minutes to go. 28 to seven, West with the lead and with the ball. Interestingly, the first team is still in the game. He's gonna keep him in for the rest of it because it's only a three touchdown lead oh, at this point. In a game like this, you know, <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, stranger <laughs> things have happened. It's true. And this is a quality football team they're playing against. Tommy McKinstry in and Adam Shaw will come out. Well, the bottom line also is, much like the game against North Penn, even if, if East does wind up losing this game, they still have a very good shot at the playoffs. And it could be they'll well, meet that, again. That's the one advantage of playing East-West in the middle of the season here. Quick pass. Oh, West with a nice catch of the pass. He'll get the first down. The clock will continue to run. He keeps the clock running. 2.40 to go. James West having a game. West game. is running, blocking, catching. What else? There it is. Phil does a great job. It just shows his athletic ability. He's got a guy on his heels. He's going to his left, which is not his natural side here. And he's running out of field. So he's coming. You're going to see him. Now he's getting close to the sideline. He's got a square shoulder. He just hops. And James West does a great job here to get up because it's thrown behind him to catch it and get what he can. He's going to get popped out of bounds here by Holmes and crew. But first down. James West is doing it. On first down. Backs in the eye. And DiGiacomo gives it to Camber. And Camber follows the push of the line. Breaks it into the secondary. Almost breaks away. Almost turned nothing into a touchdown. He still gets 14 yards on the carry. But it looked like he was down after about three. He, drank, he just ran over a, a pretty big defensive tackle and uh, one of the big uh, linebackers. Uh, he's one of the toughest runners we've ever had here. Yeah, you, you, don't, mean, you don't have to convince I'm not me of that. <laughs> telling you anything you don't know. No, not at all. <laughs> but you know what? You look at the defense, the hands on the hips right now. This is a defense that's been punished in this game. They really well, have Well, you know, West won the physical battle. Yeah, Both sides of the ball. You look at the players. When they're standing with the hands on the hips, taking the helmets off, they've just been in a tough game. And they've been on the field far too long in this half. Now the backs are, everybody's in a little bit tight. Handoff goes to James West. He breaks it through. He'll get about five yards. We have under a minute and a half to go in the fourth quarter. And it looks like we may have another East player down on the field. They're helping him up. He's all right. That's uh, Drew Bornstein on a tackle. He doesn't make that tackle. James could be uh, in the end zone right now. Drew's had a good good half at linebacker for East. He's, ma he's made a lot of tackles. Absolutely. East, I mean, there have been some solid performances. Mark Hughes has played a real nice game for East. Uh, I thought that uh, uh, Bob uh, Holmes has done an excellent job, too. Yeah, Zapu, Zapu came in there, did a real nice job as well. And the defense has made some big plays, but in the end, it's the experience and just the Solid blocking, tackling, and running of West has made it happen. And James another, West, here he goes again. <laughs> oh. I think James West is putting his calling I, card out, letting people know. know he's arrived. Well, Coach, I, I think I think the situation coach, changes if he's going to be uh, moved from fullback. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. There's a tough decision that has to be made there. Here it is. Good line surge. Gene Rich, Josh Sands, Johnny Arsenal getting over. There's Josh downfield. Adam Shaw's downfield. Well, somewhere in and Michigan, again, Dave Steve. Armstrong is smiling right now. <laughs> First down. 32, 3, 1. They're under 30 seconds here. Is Mike well, is going to let this clock just going to kneel on it and celebrate. That's what they're doing. They're kneeling on it. They're going to celebrate. The clock will run down. And for the 29th time, Central Bucks West will go off the field as a winner. Coach Petten was joining us. Thanks, Coach, for joining us. Tom White and I are going to stay here right now as the teams will come to midfield. They are down to triple zeros right now. It's triple zeros, and the game is over. Final score, Central Box West 28, Central Box E7. The teams will come to the middle of the field. They'll do the traditional handshakes. The cheerleaders all come out. This is, of course, neighbor-neighbor game. And it was a solid game. The final score will not show just how tight this game was for a long, long time. Well, you know, you look, you go back, it was 14 up and a half. We set it. East had to stop West. West drove down the field, and East holds him on a, a great tackle by Potok. Uh, Matt Pocock 
on a tough Dave Camber. And you heard, you heard Coach here tonight said you know, he's one of the toughest runners. And Matt makes a great tackle. They get the ball back. Probably the, one of the biggest plays for East is the fade pass that Josh pump and go to Mark Hughes. He catches over sh his shoulder. A third down, he catches that ball, keeps the drive alive, and just some power football, some power football tingles, zop, Holmes, and East gets a down punch. It's a 14-7 game with about, you know, eight, nine minutes to go, and you're saying, we got a game. Well, but, you know, West, West took care of that. They did, and we'll talk about that right after we come back from the break. Teams exchanging handshakes. We're going to take a break, be back with interviews, wrap-ups, everything from it. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Young kids today are fundamentally just the same as they've always been. They're curious, they're explorers, they're interested in things, they like to learn. No one taught tolerance in the classroom when I went to school. We learned it on the playground. We didn't have lessons on cooperation or talk about personal space. We were too busy dreaming about outer space. Childhood should be a time to, uh, to grow, to discover, and imagine in such a way that all things are possible. That's how it should be. Child first, then the adult. <laughs> I still haven't grown up. You want your kids to be healthy, happy adults? Let them be children first. Don't underestimate the power of play. A message from the American Toy Institute. Bureau of Land Management Wilderness belongs to all of us. Sadly, two-thirds of it is gone forever. This is Robert Redford asking you to help us keep the rest free. A message from the Wilderness Society and the National BLM Wilderness. And we are back at War Memorial Field, Doylestown, Pennsylvania, where you see the Comcast final score, 28-7. CB West beat CB East. Bob Friedman along with Tom White, John Price will have interviews on the field. We had Coach Mike Petten Sr. Uh, uh, with us for the be better part of the second half. And right now we are honored to have with us Michael Petten Jr., coach of North Penn. Coach, of course, you have been involved in these games too, and the emotions that run three in, in an East-West game. Just talk about that for a moment. Oh, they're, they're, they're very intense. Uh, and that's, I know, was one of the reasons why that, uh, you know, that the move was made to, to, to not have it at that last regular season playing date going into the playoffs just because of the emotion that's spent and the intensity on, on both sides and both the preparation and the actual playing of the game but uh, you know it's it's uh, you know just it was typical east west it was it was a dog fight and uh, you know I thought it was you know two very good football teams it was a well played game well Tom White mentioned before the game that they had a dog they had to take care of the big defensive ends uh, of, of CB East. It looked like they did that. Your view as a coach of the game and what West did to really win this game, and it looks like an easy win, but we know better. It was 14-7 to until midway through the fourth quarter. Sure. Well, I think the key for West was they, they forced East to do something that, that uh, you know, it forced, forced them away from their strength. Uh, you know, their strength all season has been, you know, running the tailback, uh, and, and I think they did a nice job of taking Tingle you know, his big plays out of it, um, you know, and force him to go to some other things that they maybe weren't comfortable doing. Uh, but to me, that's, you know, that's typical CB West defense. They're going to they're going to take away what you do best, you know, and, and force you to, 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 to beat them some other way. We said defense wins championships. We said it earlier in the game, and I'm, I'm with you on that, Coach. I think when it came down to with the defense stuffed up, when it was 14-7, shut them down, made them punt, they got it back and punched it in. But next week, you got this, you got this team here, uh, what do you think in, in terms of your team having to come in here next week and play a, a tough East team after this tough loss? Well, there's two ways to look at it. One, I think it's, uh, you know, it's going to be hard for them to, uh, to be up emotionally after, uh, you know, after this type of defeat. But I know Larry has, a, you know, is an excellent staff and they'll, they'll do a good job getting their kids uh, back up, uh, you know, knowing that they're still, you know, they can run the table and, and, and be uh, one of the top seeds in the district playoffs. Um, so it's it's a tough task. I mean, they're an excellent football team, and, and uh, you know we're we're young, and uh, you know you know still you know making a lot of mistakes, but uh, you know we're getting better. We had a good win last night against Council Rock. Uh, and, you know I I think we're you know if we're going to be successful in this game, we're going to have to have a great week of practice, and that, that's what we stress to our kids every week. John Price is on the sideline with one of the unsung heroes of tonight's game, John.
Gene, uh, the preparation for this week must have been very intense. Two undefeated teams coming into the week. What was the week like? Oh, it, it was hard. We worked so hard during practice. I mean, every day was just like live. We were practicing so hard, you know, and then it all pays off at the end, you know. We saw us celebrating. It was so, it was just a great feeling. You and your comrades on the offensive line really have become a, a great unit, and the running backs, I'm sure, are very appreciative of that. Congratulations again on another dominant performance. From an offensive line perspective, how difficult was it tonight? Oh, it was pretty, it was pretty hard because they were angling real hard, you know, and then we had to adjust to it. And so we did a lot. The first half was a little struggle, but in the second half, we adjusted to everything. Central Bucks East was a balance attack, passing and running. Uh, fourth quarter, I saw you in the backfield. You almost got the foul set. He got the ball away just in time, but he was a slippery character back there. The D-line, though, put some nice pressure on him all, all, all night long. Yeah, we, well, we've been working on that on bell ringer and stuff. You know, we just worked really hard on that, slanting and just getting changing the offensive line into the backfield. Congratulations, Gene, on 7-0 uh, right now, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Good job, John. Good job. One thing I want to mention, Coach, last year you had a similar situation. You had a quarterback who you, you lost for several games. You had to bring in Talese to take, the, take, the, take, uh, take up the slot there, and he did a good job, too, filling in as well. It may sound like a silly question, but sometimes that's a blessing in disguise. Would you sometimes agree with that? Well, then you have to put a kid in there to, to do the job, and you're going toward the playoffs, and you need to get somebody who can sure, fill in. especially when you have a... a a quality number two, a guy that you can go to, such as a, a DiGiacomo. I mean, to me, uh, uh, you know, obviously I, I think Mike Oriole's a great quarterback, uh, but on the other hand, I think DiGiacomo just, uh, you know, to me, you know, just as a running threat, I, mean, I think he's very underrated as a passer, as he, as he saw tonight. I mean, he can put the ball in the money when he has to, uh, and West is so good at power football. Now when they can add the quarterback to that and get that extra blocker in the mix, uh, you know, it just really opens up your, your offensive play calling and just is, is a, lot of, a lot of headaches uh, for a defensive coordinator. He can throw off it too when he does that well. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a well-balanced football team, and I think, I think it's a blessing in disguise right now. John Price, who have you got down there? Down on the field with Athletic Director for Central Bucks West, Wes Chuck Rocconi. Congratulations, it's your first season as the, as the Athletic Director here. Undefeated this season and a huge win tonight. Well, I have to be honest with you, I, I really appreciate Mike taking the monkey off my back because if we had lost this first game as athletic director, I don't know, it would have been the kiss of death for me. But, uh, you know, we played really well the whole game. Got to give East credit. They had some momentum there, stopping us there on the two-yard line first drive, coming down and score 14-7. But that was a critical drive, though, when we came back. James West had a great game. It was another great game and a long history of great games between, between East and West. Some of them you have uh, very special knowledge of as the former head coach. I see your sport in the black and gold tonight. Was there any uh, sense of uh, trying to keep an interest in both sides, or it was black and gold all the way? Uh, I guess you didn't see my article in the intel. I made it quite clear. I'm the athletic administrator at CB West, black and gold through blue. I mean, I have a lot of loyalties and a lot of fond memories at CB East, but right now, that's 17 years ago. My son is as old as that. So as far as I'm concerned, they're fond memories, and that's all it is. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for Coach Carey and his staff and the team. They've been through a lot the last couple of weeks. And just to stay focused and uh, put on a performance tonight in front of a great crowd. But I'm going to tell you this, John. I would rather coach in this game many times than being the athletic director in this game. It was not an easy task between people on the sidelines, people in the VIP parking. It was not an easy job. And I'll tell you. I didn't really watch the game for the fourth quarter, so it was a nice way to finish the, the game. Well, I think everything ran smooth, and obviously your team is on top, so it, it, in, in the end, it was a good night. We're looking forward to bigger and better things. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks, John. Back up to you guys. I see the fire in Tom White's eyes right now. <laughs> no <laughs> fire. As an East play. Coach, I know you've got to leave shortly. Final thoughts here. The playoffs looming down, down the right, and it's still an open field for it right now. For North Penn, obviously, they got to win. But what do you see as the keys right now, some of the key players on your team? Let's talk about the uh, the Knights right now. Well, I just think, uh, you know, we suffered a, a, an injury a couple years ago to our, our captain. He's been a three-year starter both ways, Dan Chang. Uh, missed the Nishamani game, uh, and, and that hurt us a great deal. But uh, he bounced back, played this week. Uh, it was real key for us to get him back. Uh, but our, our, I think our junior skill people is kind of where our success lies. Our, our quarterback, Chris Brown, has been a real pleasant surprise this year. Uh, Kevin Zeblum. Uh, has just been a real exciting player to watch. I, I know a lot of people that, that, that haven't seen him yet. Um, 
I think they're going to be, you know, very, very pleasantly surprised when they when they see him play. I mean, he's uh, he is just a, you know an unbelievable football player. He's only a junior, and we have a very good running back in Zach Thomas. So I, I think you know as those three junior uh, guys in the backfield mature, I, I think I think we're only going to get better. Well, Coach, appreciate you taking the time. I know you got family waiting for you. I wish you all the best this year. Thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck as you face uh, both East and West. And you've got a teeth of the schedule, and then you got LC, of course, which is always an interesting game on Thanksgiving. Certainly. Thank you very much. Thank you. T Thanks, take coach. care. Coach Michael Patton Jr. of North Penn High giving his insights into it. Tom White, we talk about it. We talk about the game year after year, and you say, gee, you know, you look at the record 29 2 and 1 over the course of 30 you know the course of 32 years you say well obviously it's a, it's a series that's been dominated by CB West but you look at the scores of some of these games you look at this game you say 28 7 they're going to pick up the Sunday paper in the morning they're going to look at the intel they're going to oh yeah 28 7 another West big win but you realize that with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter it was 14 to 7 that East had just scored and all the fire going and what impressed me, forget one thing also, that East touchdown drive was a 93 yard touchdown excuse me, 97 yard touchdown drive it's a heck of a drive to put down the field. West had to come out against a fired up East defense and I thought that Mike Carey did the best coaching job since he's taken over in making some incredibly strong calls against a fired up defense. Well, you know what, you're, you're in that huddle with Mike after that touchdown and Mike says 50, 51 games are on the line. You know, he just reminds everybody in that huddle what's on the line. Somehow you get a little quicker, you push a little harder, you run a little. So it's amazing how that, ter that, that tradition is something you always put in front of the kids and say, hey, you know, it's up to you to do it. And they're a great bunch of coaches, but I go back to what you were saying. I think East looks back at this game and says, you know, we had some opportunities early. You know, they get the first down, they had the turnover, they didn't make anything good on it. But they'll look back at this, especially with the, the opportunity probably in the future, maybe to have another shot at West to say, you know, we were in this game for Played three and a half quarters, 14-7. Right. And, you know, we ran out of gas. I think they, they, they just, you know, West did it to them in that fourth quarter. But West, I mean, West played a tremendous game, but I think East realizes that they can play with them and if they have an opportunity to play with them, uh, a game against them again, possibly in a district playoff game, they feel like, hey, we got to take care of the opportunities. They're going to learn from the mistakes and maybe have uh, a little more success than they did tonight. But you got to give them a credit. They were down 14-0. They wrote a claw back 14-7. But how about James West, huh? James West gave his calling card tonight. He said, I have arrived. I am a running back to be reckoned with. This year, it's going to be a team effort. Next year, look out. It's well, I my think, team. I think Mike. Well, let's hold that thought for a second because right now, John Price has Central Bucks East coach Larry Green. John? I'm down here on the field with Coach Larry Green from Central Bucks East. Coach, an unbelievably spirited performance from your group of kids today. You must be so pl proud of your, your team and the coaching staff. Well, I am proud of the kids. I mean, I thought they came out strong in the second half, and I mean, we knew we were playing an excellent football team. and. Uh, West speed is, is tough to simulate at times. I mean, uh, I didn't realize, I don't think, that five was as fast as he was. And, and Giacomo is very, very tough to defend because of what he can do with the football in his hand, with the play faking and getting outside and things like that. So they played an excellent game, but I'm real proud of my kids and what they did after the first half. You obviously have your share of weapons on the field this season, um, as evidenced by your 6-1 and one record so far this season. Tingle, Felicetti, how did you feel about their performances tonight? I thought for the most part they did a good job. I mean, we knew coming in that they were going to spy Tingle and we tried to move him around a little bit and I think at times that helped us. I thought Josh for the most part made good decisions. Um, the interception the kid made was a fantastic interception. I mean, I, I felt we had him beat. The kid put his hand up, made a great interception. I mean, three inches this way or that, I thought it would have been a touchdown. But, you know, the game is inches. The thing that bothers me the most is the two first downs we don't make in the, in the first half. Now, there's no excuse for not physically bouncing back from that, but I'm wondering if mentally we bounce back from that. Your defense did a, did a great job all game long containing this Central Bucks West offense, which similar to your team hasn't had much of a problem uh, scoring this season. What, what, what are the keys to your defense? Well, what I thought they did a good job is I thought we did kind of 
shut the outside down a little bit, and I thought in the, in the third quarter they made some nice adjustments running the ball back up inside, and uh, maybe we overcompensated for the outside, but with that kind of speed, I felt that was something that we had to do, and then we missed a few tackles, and, and they did a nice job inside tonight. Coach Green, congratulations on an outstanding season and a great night of football here at War Memorial Field. It was a great game. Back up to you guys. Good job, John Price. Always gets the best interviews. Excellent job by John Price on the field. So we've come to the end of the annual Central Bucks East Central Bucks West football game, and now we go on to the crux of the season as the playoffs loom down the road. Tom, it's going to be really interesting to see how things work out well, here. Well, it'll be interesting to see how East, I, th I think next week is critical for East and North Penn. How are the North Penn coming off a big win at Council Rock, East a tough loss here tonight with West. North Penn comes in here next Friday night and has to play. That's a big game. That'll that'll really determine, I think, East's future in this district playoff. And then two weeks after that, North Penn's has got to play CB West. So there's two really big games left. East, I think, after next week, really has some of the, the, the less than experienced teams to play. So I, they, they got a great opportunity next if they can win next week to put themselves in a great opportunity for district playoffs. And so we've come to the end of the game. Final score, Central Bucks West 28, Central Bucks East 7. For Tom White, John Price, Mike Petten Sr., Mike, Michael Petten Jr., this is Bob Friedman, our, ca our crew doing a great job on cameras, and all the people in the truck, thank you very much. Final score 28-7, West defeating East. Bob Friedman saying we'll see you at the game. Good night, everybody.